here on this amazing all glass court. Welcome to the Growth Point SA Nationals here at the waterfront in Cape Town. We are watching the number three seed, Alexa Pinar in orange, playing up against Shulomi Tutor in the blue top. Both ladies are swarming up, finding their, their feet and getting used to this uh, all glass court. So they've both had two and a half minutes on either side and now spinning to start the match. Shlomi has won the toss and yes, he's obviously serving. Growth Point SA National PSA Tournament. Quarterfinal match between uh, Shlomi Trutter to serve, Lexa Pina to receive, best of five games, La Ball. We will learn Wonder. from Alexa. Oh, sorry, it was down. Both ladies just trying to find the, the sort of length on the back end there, but loose at the moment. So I think probably a bit, of, a bit of nerves in both girls. It's their first match on, on this all glass court this year here at, at the tournament. And you'll see they just need to find their length and get into a bit of rhythm. Lovely. Down. Thing. Oh. Two one. <laughs> not, uh, not seen properly. Uh, unfortunately, that was down, but nearly a winner from Shinomi. You can see there's a bit, a bit of a glare on the court, um, and that's just from, you know, just from the sun coming through from the top. Um, this is obviously early morning here, so that is a problem Handout here in the Cape. Um, on this court, they have tried a bit of green awning sheeting on the top, but there's still that bit of, a bit of that glare. Um, Lovely length from Shulomi, they forces that error from Alexa. Right. Um, that's, that's exactly the sort of length that she needs to be playing more of, and she's rewarded there with, with a, an error from Alexa. Good serve, nice and tight. 5-2. Results in a, an awkward shot from Alexa, and uh, Shulomi puts it away nicely. Sure. Shulomi's on a nice little rhythm here. Going 5-2 up in the first game, 6-2 up in the first game. Hand out, 3-6. So Alexa's got a lot to do here to bring back three points to obviously level it.
down. Yeah, the air from her legs, so unfortunately. So Shinami's done very well here, and she needs just to hang on to this. I have to secure the game here. Hand out, 4 8. Good from Alexa, just getting that, uh, the backhand length going, forcing a weak shot from Shlomi, and then she put that away. Another good serve from Alexa. It's a lot more difficult in those back corners. Uh, players eight. are saying they just sort of don't pick up the ball as well in the back corners. You can see, obviously, the glare doesn't help, but you know, players need to adapt and use that in their, in their advantage. Much better Seven, backhand eight. length, and I think that's uh, you can see Lex is just getting a bit of a rhythm here, and she's she's won back three, four points here. Loose again from Shalomi. Lovely from Shinomi, lovely point. That's probably been the point of the, of the match so far. Lovely backhand, deep, um, forcing a loose shot from Alexa, and then Shinomi did stunningly to get that volley one in. Beautiful. Down. Oh, <laughs> I misses. Game ball. Yeah, so just an error there. Right shot from Alexa, but just unfortunately just nipped, nipped it in there. So Shinomi must do well here to take this game. First game to Shalomi, 11 7. That's probably gone against the what people would have thought at the start of this match. Uh, Alexa did beat Shalomi 3 Love uh, at the North Northwest close in, in March at the start of the year. Um, she's also seeded ahead of her at, uh, at the SA Country Districts team, where they would have played in the recent Birth Point RPT tournament. But uh, great on Shalomi, that was, she, she started off well. Um, lost her way a bit when Alexa came back, but um, has done well to, to finish with her first game. Twitter leads, one game to love, love all.
Welcome back. We're into our second game Hand out. One of the women's three and six playoff. Um, as, I, as I mentioned just now, Shinomi took that first one um, over Alexa. And now, you know, Alexa's obviously got a lot, a lot to do here to, to get, get a get game back here. Hand out. But one we've got a, a rugby person watching squash at the moment, Ashley. Um, obviously, the, there's a lot of, lot of vibe at the moment here in Cape Town. What a Downs. Rugby Sevens World Cup, um, which starts tomorrow, and uh, yeah, a lot of excitement. Um, what can you tell us about rugby? Well, it's just absolutely fantastic to be able to be here today, and uh, we're in the mother city, Two and uh, we've got incredible squash to be watching, and it's great to be here. We've got 40 international rugby teams from around the world that are competing in the uh, Sevens Rugby World Cup, um, and uh, most teams have got off days off today, and. Uh, that's why I popped in, and uh, yo, yeah, now we got a little bit of time to to have a look at, at some other talent um, with uh, the future of South African squash on on show here today. So, as a rugby coach, uh, you've seen these two ladies running around. You know, Down, with, uh, three you know, all. If, if you look at sort of, you know, what, what can you tell us about endurance, about uh, athleticism? Um, you know, as, as a rugby guy, you know, firstly, when you're looking at these uh, these ladies, are you know our top players in the country. Um, any thoughts from a rugby perspective? Well, it's, it's absolutely incredible the, the skill and, and endurance um, that's on display here. You know, people don't always recognize, you know, how much preparation needs to go into this and what their bodies are going through right now. You know, anaerobically, they they just you know, working at such high Stroke intensity Pino, level. And out, then to be able to have three. the concentration levels that they have to be able to execute the right shots at the right time. I, I definitely don't profess to be a, a squash connoisseur, but you know I, I really do have appreciation for you know what's being Five, you know, dished out right now yeah. with these ladies. Yeah, I immediately start thinking about uh, team sports and individual sports. Uh, you know, obviously squash uh, is, is such an individual game, such a you got to take it all three. on board by yourself. Um, thankfully, in rugby, you've got some some teammates that they can sort of spur you along. Um, yeah, they, bail, they can bail Bend you out, out as well. Six. I think the big thing here is you, you, it's, it's just you against, uh, against that wall pretty much. And, um, you know, wherever you can put that ball in a place where the opposition can't get it. You know, with uh, sevens to a, to a, a, a greater degree, Hand you, know, out. you get Seven exposed. Um, so any in individual error, you know, the opposition will take advantage of it. Um, in other team sports, like you say, you've got, you've got people that can bail you out and that uh, you can get it done. We talk about you can beat the individual, but you can't beat the system. So we at least have a system. That can protect Eight us. Four. Yeah, it's pretty much you on your own, and you you will be exposed if you uh, you're not up to it. That's for sure. And with the you know the the sevens box, um, obviously there's been a lot of talk about uh, the last one for for coach. It's been what 15 years? How many how many years has he been? It's his ninth season. It's his okay. ninth season, but oh. I mean he's been playing since about 2003. Six, so um, you know the grey hair is there for a reason, <laughs> um, and it's. It, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a great opportunity to, to, to finish up. Um, we never measure success by, you know, the, the scoreboard. We, we have other, you know, things that we look at in terms of success. And, you know, we really hope we can actually put the cherry on the cake, um, which is, 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 is him being able to bow out with, um, with some silverware at the end. Beautiful, yeah. No, the, whole, the entire Cape Town Stadium will be packed to the rafters, I'm sure. I think it's, I'm not sure if it's sold out yet, but uh, it is definitely close to that. Um, it'd be amazing vibe and also some, some ladies you know, I'm normally normally watching the Hand sevens up. rugby and we don't we actually are watching the ladies rugby um, at the same time so it'd be nice to actually get some, some games watching some of the ladies play um, and obviously with the, you know, handling the motion and uh, hopefully sometimes that can work in your favour and sometimes against you I suppose everyone wants to play get that silverware for, for the coach for his, his last tournament so how do you manage that so how do you manage the the motion side of, of, of the match the reality being a South African, and I'm pretty certain Down. that even the squash, 10, you know, the Game expectation ball. from from not just yourself but from everyone around you is that we we need to perform. And so pressure, that's not necessarily the issue. I think uh, definitely the support and um, you know, everyone being there and cheering you on that definitely you know adds to your energy levels. Um, but fortunately, you know we play we play a lot and 11, we, we find ourselves in a lot Game of high pressure Pinar. games. Games are one all. Um, so yeah. It, it, it'll be great. It'll be good. Awesome, man. Yeah. 
We'll be back soon. That's one all one all games. First quarter final, throw points to national jam matchups and things are hot up already. First match is one all between the SNCD number three and number two. Pinar to serve, love all. Welcome back. So we're into our third game here. Um, you know, Alexa was over full back one there, um, and now obviously locked all, one all. So pressure's back on Shalomi to, to try and get that form again that she had in the first game. Hand out, one love. Lovely start, beautiful length, cross court length, and that's that died nicely in the corner there. Good serving for Shalomi. I've seen it's all very tight. Um, and that's just puts. Two love. Hand out. One, two. Down, hand out, 3 2. So both ladies have been rewarded with decent lengths to those back corners. And as I mentioned before, and um, it's very difficult at those back corners. Uh, the fans are saying they just lose sight of it a bit. Uh, but you are rewarded with, with a good length. Down, oh, it's hard, 4 2. Drive there from Shalomi. Nice and tight, which forced that error from Alexa. Alexa. Not up. And lovely capitalizing Five for two. So, yeah, Shalami's forcing the errors, making it loose for, Shil for from Alexa, and um, she's doing well to, to put those away. Hand out, three five. And out, 6-3. Really got, got to the front nice and quick and was able to pick that up. Down. 
down. Hand out, 4-6. Very close second game here. Down just five six. There. I wasn't able to get a decent stroke through and just made that error into the turn. It was, it was, you know, she needed to probably back away and just give some space. A tough when it sort of flew off the side wall there. Lovely link. That's more of that. Hand out, 7 5. So a beautiful link that just died in the back corner. So she's hanging on to a two point lead here and just needs to keep that focus. Yes, let. Yes, let. 7 5. Front, uh, Alexa and uh, the referee's given a let. So reclaim the point. Out. Hand so out. Six a very seven. Crucial point here. Just one point in it, and Alexa can level the match here. So this game here, I hope to try and capitalise and, and, and actually get to the limit points first. Good achievement from Lomi. Down, the hand out, 8 6. From Alexa, that, that was definitely her point to win, but Shlomi did exceptionally well to retrieve a lot of those points. Nine six. Hard drives, which puts Selects under huge, huge pressure to, to get them back, and then that forces the, the error or a weak shot, which then Shinomi can put through. Just bumped a bit there. Hand out, 7 but, 9. Uh, yeah, Alexa's still able to play the shot. So, a lot all, all to work for here from Alexa. Eight nine. Cross court drives, but Shinomi is picking up well and, and putting pressure on, on the Alexa, just achieving all for the shots. Down nine all. The Alexa there, she's a, it's down the middle of the court, and uh, unfortunately just a, an error from Shinomi. So nine all here, one all. Doesn't get any tight in this. Punished, but a really good ten nine for Fisher game ball. Shinomi. And huge point here. Out. Oh, unfortunately. Eleven nine game to Pinar. Pinar Shinomi, leads well two then, games to one. Hang in there. Um, just a bit inconsistent, but um, yeah, she's got the two games one.
into our third game here. Um, Down, hand point. out, one up. But uh, Alexa Pina is 2 1 up. Um, and Shinomi showed what she's capable of that last game. Really, she, she had the opportunity to, to take it. Um, and uh, I think that's hand out, is one really all. Very important. Um, they've, you know, Shinomi's never beaten Alexa. And uh, I think she's shown that, that she can do it. Um, she just needs to find that belief again for this game. Not strong cross with Rise. 2 1. Just a bit weak from Shinomi. She has to really get back into this game here. Um, Alexa's taking a 2 2 1 point lead. Alexa dominated that point. Right. Taking it from corner to corner. Um, great speed from Shinomi in, in retrieving all, all, all those shots, but yeah, Alexa was really dominant there and pulled away. Alexa, just you get a sense that Alexa really is finding a groove now, um, putting in Shalomi under huge pressure with some lovely backhand drives. Um, oh, beautiful in the make. As you can five see, one. Kind of got lots of confidence now. Five one up. All to do for Shalomi here. Unfortunately, she's going to work really hard to try and get back to this game. Good, good serving from Alexa. Just see how much Six one. Put, put your opponent under with the nice deep in the back corner so Down, hand out, two six. Right, let's see how Shinami can handle this pressure now. Good serve. Lovely log from Alexa, that was outstanding. That full Hand out, 7 2. Still find enough power to get to the back corner. So, lovely get from, from Alexa. Down, nine two. Got a really good serve from Lipson, nice and high, deep. Down, hand yeah, out, Alexa, three so nine. Shinomi, from Chinti here to, to really try and get back into this game. Yeah. Good start, and that's another good serve. Just unfortunately Down, in the middle of the court. Four nine. So she was lucky there. Um, air from Alexa, so a bit of lo uh, a loss of concentration from Alexa. And Shinobi hopefully must just believe in. Down, hand out, 10 4, match ball. Good serve, Alexa. 11 4, and, match um, to Pina. Pina wins one. three games to That's one. Well 7 11, 11 6, 11 9, 11 4. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes our first quarter final. Let's give the ladies a hand again. Well played, girls.
right, Alexa, probably haven't got your breath back yet. Congratulations, uh, are you happy with that performance? You did, you were under pressure in the beginning and I agree with you, you were missing your length. Was that something that you were aware of in the situation or do you think it was just nerves that were controlling you? Well, you got comfortable and you got your game back, so uh, that's good. Last year you were down here in the same situation and you, you also won your first round match. It was a bit of a tough encounter and then you got into the semi-finals. You happy with where you are? You hoping to go one step further to the finals? You're always hoping. <laughs> as far as training goes, you uh, graduated a couple of years ago and uh, squash took a bit of a back seat in your life for a while. Um, where is it sitting now? Is it uh, priorities coming back? It looks like you haven't left the court. It looks like you've got energy and enjoyment for the, and love for the game again. Is, am I correct in that assumption or not? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think mostly varsity and you were stepping into the final. Um, kind of re reach your rhythm. So now I think the final is in our life. It's a great spot for It's quite an amazing thing. Um, Shalomi plays for SACD. She's number three. You play for SACD. You're number two. Uh, SACD, number one, is also here. Um, What's it like playing for such a strong province? Uh, intimidating at times. <laughs> Why so? Because your teammates are just like machines. Well, I think you're a bit of a machine. A um, couple of words for Shalomi. She's obviously a bright young talent. Uh, we've got three girls in the draw for the top eight that are still studying at university. For a while, it was just you for a while, um, for many years. So that's encouraging signs for Lady Squash. Yeah, I think that's also the I think that's great advice. It's wonderful having you back in Cape Town. Good luck for the semi-finals. Alexa Pinar.
One of the things I failed to mention, he's just come back from the World Masters. South Africa sends a huge contingent every year to go and play. He was in Poland this last year, this year, excuse me, a couple of weeks ago. And what you're looking at is the world over 35 men's champion, just a portrait. Your referee for this match is once again Alex Jonsson. Alex is fresh back from the States. Welcome home, Alex. I see it's been good to you. It has. Too good. Welcome to DJ Tyrone here to my right. He's going to keep us entertained. Once again, a big thank you to all our sponsors, KFC, Stair Kinnicall,
2022 Growth Point SA National PSA Tournament quarterfinals match between Rodney Durbach to serve, Christo Potkita to receive. Best of five games. Love all. Welcome back to the second match of this morning. Uh, it's now we are up to the men's quarterfinal. Rodney Durbach and Christo Potkita. Number three and six seeds. I hope you got that introduction at the start by um, former SA coach Richard Castle. We're looking at two legends of the game in South Africa. Both been around many, many years, and um, as Rodney, as, as Richard said, uh, Rodney, a three-time former champion, SA national champion, and Christo one love. has also got one SA national title behind him and the current world of 35 champion stroke to Potkita so both a very good nick um, and a really exciting match to to watch here. obviously Rodney Durbach the local boy from Fishhook up against uh, Christo from Johannesburg both wearing blues so I can't you know, for those that don't two know these one. two legends, um, I'll go with the lack of hair from Christu uh, and uh, Rodney's the other gentleman. So immediately if you could compare uh, the previous match, you can see the pace that both these players compared to the ladies. It's a lot, lot higher and... Um, We'll see a lot more harder uh, links and that sort of thing. Not up. Besides Three, the two. amazing experience that both these players bring to, to this match, uh, you'll notice that Christo, very exciting player. Um, very, you know, he's got very fast hands and uh, little things like those flicks that you just see now. There's his trademark. Lovely link from Christo. You see how I just dived nice in the back then. That's what the players have been telling me that uh, you are rewarded for a decent length. Dives in the back. Which is what you want from a, from a decent shot. Beautiful drop from Rodney. If Chris is able to get it. Yes, let's. Three all. Good. So he did enough to show the, the referee that he was able to get to that ball. Ronnie was just inquiring, was that not a winner? Lovely skills from Christo there. Just such quick hands and uh, foresight just to move around and, and pick up that that shot from Rodney. There was enough and uh, yeah, Rodney running away at that point. And out for all. So locked at four all here. Nothing in it at the moment. Five four. Just a slight error from Rodney. Lift it in there. Yes, let five four. Six four. Oh, well read for Krista. 
Lovely fetching from Christo. I thought that Rodney had, had him there. Nice deep length. And just unfortunate that uh, Rodney just chose the wrong you know, cross court. He should have maybe looked at the going down the line. Just so really well and was there to volley and win it. 8-4. Oh, another good read from Christo. 9-4. Just reads the game so well and it just pounces on it and uh, another good winner there. Ten four, game ball. Down. Just down there. First game. Eleven to four. Still so leads one game to love. Fortuna leads one game to love. Love all. So we're back here for our second game. Christo was quite dominant in that first one. Eleven four up. Um, no let. And everything to play for here for Rodney. Um, he's got. I saw one him love. chatting with Zoe, his wife, who's uh, his coach in court today. And um, yeah, be intrigued to hear what what her thoughts are. We 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 Rodney can and improve out. to One try and hole. get back into this match. Lovely <laughs> links from both both these players. Just a few Two errors one. from Rodney. Um, Christo is obviously very quick around the court and is picking up everything that, that Rodney is able to throw at him at the moment. And it's just putting Rodney under a bit of pressure. Uh, I just sort of feel he needs a bit, bit more and patience um, and those openings will come. Three, two. So er one or two errors from Christo now, so that just. This gives Rodney a bit of confidence to put some points together here. Yep. And the Four, double bounce from Christo. So that's that's low for, for Rodney here. Two point lead. He needs to capitalize this and just keep the pressure on. Christo is the one that needs to now try and get back in this game. Two points down. Nice game for Rodney. Yes, let. 4 3. Still a bit in the way there. 4 3. 4 2, correction. He doesn't have to go around, he has right to direct access. 4-2. 
So Roddy's just inquiring with Ref um, about if that really was a let, and uh, the Ref has uh, given his explanation that um, Crystal could got to that ball. So yeah, let's be played. Down. Oof, unlucky for Rodney. And out. Three, right shot, four. just let that in. He's a nice control at that point and had worked, done all the hard work and unfortunately just put it into the tin right at the end. He's definitely pushing Christian nicely around the court here, Rodney is. Just down for Krista to hit the tin there. And out. But Five lovely three. movement from, from Krista. And um, yeah, Rodney's, Rosie, uh, Rodney's in, uh, obviously forcing those errors. Keeping him moving around the court. Yeah, unfortunately, but bit loose from and Rodney out, there. Four, with the right shot, and Krista capitalized quickly. So I feel it's a very big point here. Um, Christo's done well to pull one point back, and Rodney wants to obviously keep that lead. So, yeah, you know, not wide Five enough. Um, Christo's able to just you know, completely dominate that point. Rodney's got to get it a bit tighter if he's going to do a cross court. But too short for Rodney. It's got to get Kristen moving around with more. Beautiful, Kristen. Again, just showing his talents, Six, getting to that ball and still having, you know, uh, enough on the ball to, to just give a beautiful cross-court winner. Yes, let. 7-5. So five. now all the pressure is back on to Rodney who needs to try and claw his way back into this game. Chris has got a two-point lead. So some good links from Rodney Eight but uh, Chris is able to put together a lovely drop there. So he's putting the pressure on but um, yeah, Chris is up for it and Applying it back, unfortunately, then Nine, five. You know, an error from Rodney. Um, trying to think of other things he can do to try and get points. Yes, let's just eight five. Nine five, correction. Nine five. Nine five. Yes, let. 9-5. So I think Rodney was looking for a stroke there, but um, yeah, the referee has ruled a let. Play the point again. Oof, unfortunate. He's right there, just seemed five. to right elude him there. Yeah, unfortunate for Rodney. Lovely length for Rodney. Down. And out. 6-10. Game ball. Pixie needs to just do a bit more of that. Um, as soon as you get Christo moving around a bit, he, he then does make those errors at the end. Um, just got to keep trying to move him. Find those shots that, that force him from corner to corner.
Oh, beautiful pass there. Just waited a bit. Um, he's closing a cross court, but Charles is the winner. 11 6, Crystal leads two games to love. The leads two games to love. Love all. Welcome back. So, yeah, third game here. 11-4, um, 11-6 11, down from a Rodney perspective. Um, the local crowd will be hoping that he can pull it back here. See a bit more energy from Rodney in the start of this third game. So I think he's, he's fired up and, and knows he's got a lot of hard work to do here. Yes, Let. You've got to clear that after playing. Level, because it was still a bit round you the other angle. So really just inquiring, did, did Krista make every effort to move off that ball? It was very difficult for him, but anyway, yeah, uh, left ruled, and here we go again. We play the point. Down. Oh, just unfortunate in the tin there. One love. Rodney, I just feel he's got to try and get those links going and just get Krista back into those corners before going for those, those winners in the front. That's sporting from Christo, you see there's a double bounce. And out, one all. Lovely, lovely work from, from Rodney and uh, throwing in two lobs there, which is the first time I've seen in this game. So maybe that's something that, that uh, Coach Zoe has been talking about in between matches, in between games. Try and just uh, and you know, mix it up a bit, uh, throw a couple couple balls into into the air. You know, I'm still talking about that glare at the back, those back corners. And you know, obviously if you throw, them in the, throw the ball up in the air, um, it's difficult for your opponent to, to read those. Oh, lovely volley from Chris Three, too. Just put too much pressure on Rodney. And there's an error from him. So again, pressure back onto Rodney. He's two points down in this uh, third game. Lovely volley from Rodney. But Chris is up for it. Oh, down. again. Just nipped the tin Four, there. 4 1. So Rodney's doing everything right. And just, you know, by, by Chris too, keeping on picking Four, those one. balls, it uh, puts, puts pressure back onto down. Rodney. Um, normally those those would be winners against another, another opponent but your shot was down Chris was definitely showing oh, his pick athleticism up. pick up was fine 4-1 what's a lovely lovely burst from Chris to 5-1 just see how it died in the front there might have also put some put some spin on it Six one. Oh, unfortunately, that's just been the nature of, of the game for for Rodney today. Getting some really good positions and then just a bit of an unforced error at the end there. Lovely 
Nej, jeg ville op. Hvad synes du? Hvor er lige strengt her? Uff. Hvor er lige strengt her? Uff. Hvor er lige strengt her? Hvor er lige strengt her? Hvor er lige strengt her? Hvor er And out two seven. Oh, just such good speed from Chris. Oh, very and well read that, that drop from Rodney. He flew into that corner and put through a really good, uh, strong, hard. Drive or into the neck. Nine two. So really dominant performance here from Chris Two. Nice deception there from Rodney. Let's yeah. Let's see if there's something something left here for for Rodney to. Again. And out ten three. Match ball. Chris Two, very confident and yeah, match ball. Oh, another show of his quick hands. Got to return Match from some from somewhere. And a good win from Chris Two. Three love. Eleven four. four eleven six. Eleven three. Eleven three. Are you for a
you today is the quarterfinals of all the players that have qualified from eight different regions from around the country. Our next match is the ladies' quarterfinal. First on to court is a young lady who was inspired to play tennis because, uh, squash, excuse me, because of a rainy day in the tennis team. Uh, she'd like to play until she's 80. And her best achievement would be that, actually. And her best achievement is essay number one and world number 28. She represents Western Province. She plays for Western Province Cricket Club. Her name's Sioli Waters. Her opponents um, plays for Crusaders in Port Elizabeth and represents Eastern Province. She's not sure of her current national ranking and she's coached by Tyron Dahl. She came seventh at the World University Games in Birmingham last year and her goal is to be the best that she can play, best that she can be and represent South Africa one day. She enjoys mountain biking and hot chocolate. Her name's Haley Ward. The referee is Alex Hurtson. For those of you who don't know, squash is an immensely global sport. It's in every single games championships around the world besides the Olympics. So be part of the World Games, the Asian Games, the Pan American Games, the All Afri African Games, and of course the Commonwealth Games. So the next time that squash goes and bids to be part of the Olympics, please tell your friends and everybody that that's what they've got to vote for. Get onto the WSF page and help us out. These athletes most certainly deserve the Olympics. Once again, thanks to a lot of our sponsors, City of Cape Town, Aquile, Stack Unicorn, Eurolux, Graham Beck, who's giving them fantastic champagne to the winners. And Vance Cliff. And you can have that for half time. They keep me going for all four days. Paradox Flowers, right here in the BNA waterfront. If you're in trouble, or you're just feeling generous, or romantic, go get some flowers from Carolyn's Flowers, please. Need that coffee addiction? Starbucks got you covered. And KFC, it's lunchtime.
Hello, everybody. This is Zoe, Zoe Durbach, and I'm going to be helping with the, well, I'm going to be doing your commentating here. Unfortunately, I am on my own, but, um, <laughs> so it's going to be quite hard, but hopefully I'll be able to take you through the match. We've got Scioli Waters playing against Haley Ward, who Richard Castle would have introduced you to. Um, Richard's sitting there on the left in the blue shirt and sitting next to our medic, who's on standby. Uh, this is the glass court at the V&A waterfront. It's warm down there, and you can see the sun on the court. And you see how high the ball's bouncing, almost to hip height. It's almost like a tennis ball at the moment. It's making it very tricky for the players. Haley's on court, having a hit now while we're waiting for Scioli. Um, and then they're going to be starting. It's going to be best of five games as per normal. Scioli's on court. And we'll see who's going to start. Okay, Haley's going 2020. to start. She's actually from Eastern Province. Sioli plays for Western Province. 2022. Mike, please. I don't know if you can hear the referee down there. <laughs> 20, 2022, no. Oh, let's talk about our players. Both of them, obviously, a favorite subject at school is math. So that's quite fun for anyone out there who thinks people who play squash can't do math. Need a mic. Not correct. The squash club, Haley plays for Crusaders and PE. Sioli plays for Western One, Province two. Cricket Club here in Cape Town. Right, are we going to serve? Not yet. Current ranking in province. Sioli is number two. Haley's first in her province, number one. Neither and I don't know what their top rankings national, are PSA national rankings. Ladies quarter final. Haley Ward to serve. Sioli Waters to receive. Best oh, of five games. Love all. Katie Mayhew is reffing. Down. One love. It's a very fast court. It comes off very quickly off that front wall. You can see it coming off very, very fast. It's difficult to see. And the side wall, it Hand bites out. the ball. One all. So you've got to play a very tight shot. But if it hits the wall, it bites and kicks off the side wall makes it really quite tricky. Down, 2-1. Good serve. Down, 3-1. It's difficult to see the ball when you're serving and you're hitting the side wall here. So that's what you're aiming at, just hit that side wall. Down, hand out, 2-3. I've got some data in front of me. I'll go through some of this. Out. So Haley, three all. she started playing at 10. Also Scioli. What inspired Scioli? Basically, a rainy day with the tennis team. And Haley, her parents played. So she learned from her mum and dad. So we're hitting up and down the wall. We're both trying to find the wall, get as close and as tight as possible. Nice, Sioli. She just came in for the volley. The volley three. drop. And caught the neck there. Nice high serve. It's difficult to see when it's up there because of the sun and the lights. Five, three. So it's good strategy just lobbing it up. Getting in the way a bit. Shot. Not up. Hand out. Four five. Both are trying to find their rhythm here. You can see that because the rallies are quite short. Do you see how it bit the wall there? It popped out.
quite difficult to control the ball when it's so hot and bouncy. Look at where it's bouncing. It does slow down at the back, but it does sit up a lot. Asking for a let there. Five, six. Six all. So serve. Seven, so he's just putting it away. You want to hit that side wall. Not up, hand out, seven all. It's a clever shot, very clever. You can see in squash, having a good squash brain makes a big difference, particularly in the balls behaving. Badly, if you like, like this. Eight, seven. <coughs> There's so much to the game. Stronger, faster, fitter, squash brain, technique. You use it all. It's supposed to be one of the healthiest games in the world. Healthiest sports, as Richard says. Um, you can see why. Plus, it's fun. So, Sioli there is really putting on the pace, just really moving Haley around, putting her under pressure by hitting the ball hard so she's having to move quicker. Seconds. First game to Sioli. I'm not sure if I'm still on, but I'll keep talking. It's interesting to see the girls after the guys. I mean, the guys are, I certainly wouldn't say fitter, but they're certainly stronger and faster. It makes a massive difference when you're playing these rallies and playing the ball through. And you notice what's happening with the ball being so hot. You have to slow the game down more. Otherwise, it's just a big hitting match and the ball can bounce anywhere and everywhere. We had the juniors last week. It's a fantastic squash coming through. The guys were excellent, the boys, should I say, and the girls. It was great entertainment. And the waterfront, there's a lot of people coming to watch. A lot of spectators, people who knew the game, even people who didn't. A lot of people asking about it. And you can explain to them, yes, we, you're seeing some highly skilled players here, but it's a very, very easy game to just get on and have a hit. Ball doesn't disappear, you're on one court. Squash ball is too difficult, use a tennis ball. If you've got kids, it's the most fantastic playpen in the world. Just give them a racket and a couple of balloons and they're happy for hours. Haley's on court there having a hit, trying to, trying to get her eye in. Everyone would have had time on the court having hits on their own before they play their matches to get used to the court. But yeah, different time of day, ball behaves differently. Waters leads, one game to okay. love. 
One game up. Oops. That was unlucky. It would have been a clear window for Scioli. Can't make mistakes. So Scioli's really attacking the tee here. Getting on there quickly. Not messing around. It's a nice rally, this. Oh, killer. Hand out, one off. Good shot. Stroke toward hand out. Mm. So he's not too happy about the stroke awarded. Saying why wasn't that a let? Why couldn't she play it? It still stands. Low and hard is working for Scioli at the moment here. The ball's moving so quickly. Lobbing it up into the lights. And using her killer shots. Now she's rallying down the wall, of course. Oh, triple boast. Haley's taking advantage. Scioli's in trouble, which is coming in. Oh. See how it's biting that side wall and kicking out. Oh, such a good rally. We just bumped into each other. Yes, Ned. Yes, Ned. Water serving to all. That ball. Not up. Mm, ball down. Three, two. This game is very close point wise. Let's see if this is going to sustain throughout. It'll be interesting to see. I promise you it's hot on that court. It's a good shot. They are bumping each other rather a lot because the ball's hot, but they're certainly doing their best to get around each other and not stopping every five minutes for a let. So it's good. Out. Hand out, five ball. Great, right, using all four corners now. That's making your opponent work hard. She changed the serve there for a low hard serve. Clips the neck. Seven nice. Five. He's now done the low hard serve now twice. It's good to vary the serve. Down. Hand out, six 
falls yeah. down, but it's the right shot. It would have been a winner. Just down. I like to see what the aspirations are with the players in their squash. I've got some notes in front of me. Hang on. Great high serve. Look at their serve. Sioli says, I like to play until I'm 80. That's the beauty of the game, isn't it? You don't have to give up. Just keep playing. Gotta be fit for it, though. Nicely played, Sioli. Hayley wants to be the best that she can play for South Africa one day. That's her aspirations. Oh, no, mistake. So who's playing it safe down the wall here? Nice. Hayley's 18, just stepped in for a volley drop. She sees the urgency in these next few points. Closing in. Stretching ward. Ten all. A player must win by two points. Right, we've got to clear by two points here. So the cross, cross court drop worked. Got her the point. See how these two games up. Right, 90 seconds between the games. See how these hobbies. The top three squash playing nations in the world, Egypt, America, and the UK. Waters leads, two games to love. Okay, Sioli leads two games to love. Sioli to serve. Using the forehand more this time. Oh, back to the backhand. Great serve and return. 
I think Sioni is going for the high balls and the drops. That's certainly winning a points here. Training do you do and how often? Sioli says, anything while my kids are occupied. As a mum of two, Sioli is a busy lady. So I think those of us who've got children know exactly what she means. And Haley, she's saying I do spinning and have training with my coach. Spinning is great for squash. Anything's good for squash, actually. Both agree it's the friends and the camaraderie you get out of the game. Hand out, two four. Individual sport, but my goodness, you certainly make a lot of friends in it. Hand Great out. return Five from Sioli, Sioli there. Cross court drop off the serve. High risk, it worked. Nice high serve from Haley. No let. Hand out six. Oh, three. no let. That looked a bit mean, didn't it? It's difficult to tell from this position when you're watching on the screen. The referee certainly has the best position to judge. Out. Seven three. That also shows you just how hot that ball is. She didn't even hit it that hard or that high on the front wall and it still went out. You think someone's run off with the ball? This is hard because both players are going to be wanting to think about the game, not lose focus, and meanwhile you just... Where's the ball gone? We're going to have to get a new ball and have to warm it up. I'd rather have the old ball because it's nice and hot. That's not a train smasher, you just use a new one and warm it up. There we go. Because it's a new ball, you've got to warm it up. So both players are allowed to hit until both players are happy with it, and then you just resume from where you left off. Same story if you break the ball. They got the old ball, okay. Hit that a few times as well. So let's look at the best achievement in squash. Sioli, SA number one, rule 28. From the left. Haley here, she came seventh at the World University Games in Birmingham. Nice. Okay, see early to serve. Off we go. 7 3. Eight, three. See early certainly got the upper hand again in this game. Nine, three. And Haley's leaving a bit too late. Come on, Haley. Oh, la la. 10-3, match four. Losing that ball did not help Haley there. Eight, 
Up. Yes, left. Ten three right. Match four. Celia's well ahead in this, so she's not going to be playing safe. It'd be interesting to see if she'll go for a high risk shot. No, nope, no. Nope. They're riding it through. Great. Hand out. 14. Match shot, Haley. Match four. So Haley's taking the upper hand here. She's stepped forward and volleying, just being a little bit more aggressive in the valley rally here. Down. Eleven oh, unlucky. Match the waters. Waters wins. Three games to love. Eleven eight. Twelve ten. Eleven five. Nice game, ladies. Nice game.
national finals. His goal is to become the national champion and to be in the top 30 in the world rankings. He enjoys playing golf, eating pizza. His name's Ruan Olafier. His opponent plays for Irene Country Club in Pretoria. He plays for SACD and he's been played 12 growth point in provincial IPT Championships. He's coached by Craig van der Watt. He's currently ranked three in South Africa and two in his province. He also enjoys golf and Springbok rugby. Let's hope it gets better. And definitely a bright place. Yeah, he's a burki. His name's JP Brits. One of the things that, uh, if you don't know about squash, it's an incredibly physical sport. You will see in this game that's about to take place that both athletes, their heart rates will get well into the 180 beats a minute on a regular basis. If you had to compare squash with tennis as an example, in a 90 minute professional squash match, they will run twice the distance as a tennis match of four and a half hours and burn two and a half times the calories. And they will have a resting average heart rate over that 90 minutes of 163 beats a minute. Whereas tennis, if it was Mr. Nadal, would be around about 139. The reason for that is simple. We only get a break every game, and that breaks for two minutes. Tennis, obviously, you sit down every two games for a cup of tea. 
<laughs> if you watch your Wimbledon, you might get some strawberries with it. Thank you to the VNA Waterfront for hosting this wonderful event, the City of Cape Town, and all our other sponsors, Aquile, BLK for the clothing, and the relationship that they've developed now with the Squash SA, Starbucks and KFC, the Southern Sun, Hotel Group, Caroline's Flowers, Snack Inico, Innovision. When you walk around the waterfront, you will see all their the advertising boards and digital ones, that's Innovision. Thank you very much for putting Squash up there. And to Bayer's Club from Grand Beck. And last but not least, Maryland's Flowers. Half time. Quick reminder, all these matches are being live streamed on the Squash SA Facebook page. Good afternoon and welcome to the 2022 South African National Squash Championship uh, for this quarterfinal match between Juan Ulifir and JP Britz. My name is Michael Lombard. I'm joined by Zoe Dobach. Afternoon to you, jo to you Zoe. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here with you, Miguel. Much yeah. better with you than on my own, <laughs> I must admit. <laughs> yeah, so the, these two players have played in this tournament before. They played, I remember, in the 2020 semi finals, which Ruan won, I believe, in four games. So this will be an interesting prospect. Ruan plays for Robin Hauteng and JB plays for South African Country Districts. So they both, both have won nationals. So yes, you're quite right. JP in 2019. Ruan only made the final. finals in 2020. Right. Yeah. So you're certainly going to be up for it this year. Yeah, both of them are very experienced at this level. They've played many national events. Lots of big uh, tournament matches, lots of growth point IBT oh. matches. So these are two of our, and they both represented South Africa as well. Mm. So they know each other's game very well. Good friends. I don't think any. I don't think there's anyone on squash who don't like each other. Everyone gets on very well, actually. That's the beauty of this game, at the moment. We'll see if if, if there's anything to the contrary as the tournament goes on. Yes. Sometimes people are friendly off court, but on court it can get a bit. Feisty. Oh, that's just good competitiveness. Yes, it is. I'm not sure what the head-to-head -head with these two players is, but they will have played a lot of league matches. As I already said, there won't be any secrets between how each other, how they play. No. Well, they would have had Jarvis, the Interprovincials, Growth Point Interprovincials, because JP would have played for a SACD. Yes. He was playing... Ruan at Northerns. Yeah, Ruan was... Everyone was at one, and JP, JP was at two. Was at two the last couple of years. So. In the current rankings, we've got three for JP and six for Ruan. But they're close. So what are you calling for this? What do you think? This is hard to call because I haven't really seen Ruan play this year. Uh, I know that Ruan was based in Cape Town for a number of years. He was training with Rodney Durbach a couple of years ago so I think he may be more used to the conditions and if he plays well this might be more suited to his game even though JP has the higher ranking good call good call yes a no a, a no call yeah I don't know if I want to call it now I know it's going to be tough they both want it I think it can go either way you know yeah, this is a hard one to call. I think we yeah. will be more informed after the first game or so. Yeah. yeah. Nice and long first rally. One love. Strike two, 
actually lost. Yeah, that early lead here from Ruan. A couple of, couple of nervy shots look by the looks of it from JP. I was talking earlier with the girls how the high serve is actually working very well. High serve and against the side wall. So you lose it. You do, especially as the viewers can see, this, is, this court is... The colouring is almost grey. And because the ball on a glass court is white, you sometimes lose track of where the ball is. Two. And see it half a second later, having played on this court recently myself. Mm. And on the board there for JP. Comes off very quickly off that front wall. And it does. Certainly slows down at the back. But my goodness, it comes off fast. And as we said earlier, I was in the girls. You oh, see how nice it bites, bites that side wall. It's very hard to keep it tight. Uh, tight. But the nicks, there's been a lot of nicks. Mm, there's a large nick on this. Mm, sort particularly of that backhand. Yeah, what we, what we in squash call the sixth corner, which is sort of two thirds of the way to the front of the court on the backhand. The wall sits a bit out. Nah, nice couple of finishes there Three, from Brits on the forehand volley. That's looking strong so far. Mm. But Ruan is putting it there. He is. That's nice and tight. Oh, really struck. And out three all. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how many times they've these players have hit on this court before this match. I'm sure they both have, but it's a bit different playing a match versus practicing. Very much so, and also throughout the day, depending on where the sun is. You've got to try and make sure you can practice on the court about the same time that you're playing your match. So it can be completely different. But you get the court when you can. You do, and some... I remember earl earlier last Four, week, I could three. see in the back forehand yeah, corner, there was sunshine that came onto court, which is a bit different because you get blinded up there, mm. put the ball in high. And it's certainly warm down there. Even the spectators are taking their jackets off. <laughs> I'm losing track of, of the ball myself here. Another good finish. And out and four seeing if from our position, if you see the see the ball a bit late, you can only imagine for the players. So I think whoever gets a a strong position on the team is either either able to put their shot in quickly like there. And out. Five, JP four. didn't see that at all. And mm -hmm. It was a bit loose, but... The girls, it was the same. Whoever stepped forward and volleyed it quickly, the other person didn't really have a chance. Just can't see it. Well, you see it late, shall we say. Yeah, you see it late. Yeah, nice no, rally, this one. Mm. Boost in. Oh, nicely called there by Ruan. And out, five, yeah. all. five all in the first game, nothing in it so far. Five all. You said it'd be close. Don't know. Six, five. By the looks of the, by the yeah, fantastic trickle burst there by Brits. Oh, is that up? Uh, oh, a nice not, not that it matters. No. Great one two punch there by Ulifi. And out, six all. Good return there. Yeah, let's go into that point in the first game where early on they were both trying to find a length, hitting the ball quite hard. Now a little bit more variety coming in. Certainly see them flowing a bit better. A lot better than when they started out. Finding their rhythm more. Tight there. Oh good. 
Oh, yes, let's just clipped him. Yeah, but on six all for the viewers. Right. If you hit your opponent, but the ball goes up, then it's a let. If you hit your opponent, and that if makes your shot go down, then it's a stroke. Often that rule is misunderstood. Hmm. But the point of the referee is to make it fair. Uh, Follow <laughs> the rules the best you can, but make it fair. <laughs> I know the players certainly don't always feel that it is fair. I know, I know. And out seven, six. Okay, but it's just getting a small lead here as we approach the end game. Oh, good land point with the field. Back into the rally we go. He has a chance. Thicker past. This is a good rally. Yeah. Oh, unlucky. Yeah, uh, well done from Bridge there. He was really under pressure there. It was tight. Tight in that back corner. Certainly kicked yeah. out at an odd angle. Yeah. Well, if you're letting a couple of volleys go past there, you could have kept the pressure on. Stretch there, making the mistake. This is a big point if Willifield wants to stay in this first game, he needs this next one. And he's certainly going in looking for the volleys. Oh dear. No let. Oh was dear. Up. And the referee's taking a hard line yes, there because the Fritz right shaped his shot it, towards the forehand wall, so which no Willifield was not in his swing. Seven, Bit harsh, but they no, seem to right have judged that Ulifi was seven, not seven, actually in his swing. No, I so thought that was a bit mean. But we have got a different angle from up here than they do. have done there. We so do. Well, Brits can't do anything about the decision now. It's down to how does he react. Because mm -hmm. he does still have the advantage in the score. Good pressure by Ulifi. 8-9 now, now he's back in it. Well, Ruan, sorry, I must use their surnames. Olivier, Olivier. Keep wanting to put a French <laughs> slot on board Ruan's name. Olivier. <laughs> <laughs> he's certainly coming in early and playing aggressive, aggressively in these, in these rallies and is yes, working to his advantage. Yes, he's responded well after going down 6-9. Oh, and the stroke to Brits. And out, 10 eight, game Always ball. risky going straight from that front position with speed. Mm. Particularly with this wall, because it just bites it, kicks it out. Okay. Can Brits convert his two game balls? Oh, that's a good volley. Another volley. Opportunity. That's a nice cross court hold there by Willy Fee. And out, 9 10, game ball. Yeah, pressure's on here. You can feel the tension. Mm. Is uh, that yeah. 10 all? Yes, it was. That's a play win point. by two Oops, points. Yeah. That's expensive. It's a gift, gift of the givers. Goodness, that was risky. Yeah, I went for it again. Yeah. Down. Oh. 11 10. Game ball. taking some yeah. risks here and it's not yeah. pulling off for him, that's for sure. Yeah, no, no, you don't normally see him play like this. Not Wait. at this point. No. That's a nice cross ball. Well, Olivier is certainly taking advantage of this. Oh. Stroke to Brits. Yep. And out, 11 all. Stroke. Sensible decision there. 11 all. Ruan's working hard here. He's taking the ball early. He has been, and that's going to be taking quite a bit out of him physically, but it's working for him. He's getting the points out of it. Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried if I was him, after, even though he gave the stroke away there. He has the momentum currently. Mm. Yes, let's. A little bit off to the left. 11 all. Select yep. there. 11 all. Could have lead by two. Did they say that earlier? If they didn't, we know that's still the case. Oh. 
Oh, that's a great finish. My goodness. And out. 12 11. Risky. Game ball. Yeah. Ruin when he's up and he's keen, he. Absolutely agreed. Really gets in there. He gets he's the points. He's a confident player. Mm. Oh, nearly had that side all nicked there. Should get. But back into the rally. Neutralize it well. Game to Olivia. 13-11. Really, it's one game to love. Everyone was there, though. He was there for the shot. Olivia leads one game to love. Love all. Welcome back, Ruan Olivier against JP Britson in this quarterfinal match. Olivier leads one game to love. Yeah, it was on a tie break. As one love. As you can see there, Olivier was down in the first game, but he gained a lot of confidence, started going for his shots. And that certainly is a positive start to the second game. So, if you were chatting to either of the players, yes, what would you say to either of them? What's working, what isn't, and what should their strategy be? I think certainly looking at Ruan, he's, gained, he's got the right game plan. He's trying to be assertive, he's trying to take the ball in short when he has the volley. That's working from so far. What I would say to JP is he ha was in the attacking position, but he's made too many errors at the start of no the, at the end of that first And out, one all. Ball's gone past you. Well, he was already going for those you. high risk shots. One yes, which it's got to be surprised me. Yeah. yeah, which has got to be said is not really what his. It's not what he's known for. I was surprised if you go for it. Mm. Yeah, I would agree entirely with what you said, and I would have said to JP, you know, just play the rallies out. Don't go for winners off the serve sort of thing. You know. Okay, this second game is already more open and dynamic than the first. A couple more boasts, drops, short game. It's coming hard in. Hard rallies. Yet. Oh. Well recovered from Olivier. No, that's, that's a, a ten. That's a bad mistake. And out. Two one. He knows. He knows he shouldn't have made that mistake. He's not happy with himself, so he knows that. In contrast, I think two Olivier one will take confidence from that rally. He was mm. undefending and his opponent made an easy mistake. And as you said, he's very much of a confidence player, so when he's got his confidence, he start plays a lot better. He is. He's, a very, he's extremely dangerous when he's confident. He has led 2-1. There's a dodgy panel at the front left there. 
Van Dyke. Yeah. So for the viewers, uh, you may have noticed that this is a short. This is a 17-inch tin, which is the same height which is used on the PSA World Tour. Most of our local squash courts play with a 19-inch. So this does mean, uh, as Willy Fink, it's a and out rather too soft old. Drop down to the tin that your short game can, is more rewarded on this court. Particularly at that front left on the back end because the board on the floor Ooh, is that's skewed. A Three, two. That serve was, was, was close. Mm. Yes, let's. I know I saw you trip. Three, okay, two. A little left. Bit of interference there across the middle. Nothing malicious. JP is quite a profuse sweater. Is he? Yeah, <laughs> very much so. And to be fair, so is Ron. I've trained with him before, and he'd gone through about three shirts in a session, and I hadn't even gone through one. I don't think that was a reflection of effort, certainly. It's funny how some people are like that. Everyone's different. Stroke oh. to Brits. Yeah, it'll be the stroke. 4 2, yeah. left. You could have played a winner off that as well, so it's definitely a stroke. Yeah, but. It's nice to qualify. Sorry, right side. Calling a stroke. Could he have played a winner off that? Answer is yes. It sort of compounds the stroke. Just a small lead here for Brits in the second. This is, a, this is quite a. Even though it's early in the game, this is an important point. You could open up a three point lead and head into the mid game. You could have a nice advantage. Oh, oh that's a good second chance. Good get from Brits. Oh, he's done well there. Great recovery. 5 2 left. This yeah. is where you don't want um, Ruan to actually panic. No, but into this mid game, Brits has a good position. And out in 3 5. Mm. It's the X factor of the court. You can't always tell if players are seeing the ball well or not. Yeah, Brits have started to use a little bit of height in their last few rallies. I like the look of that tactic that might prevent Ulifi from getting onto the volley quickly. Well, he's been dangerous. Every time he's taken the volleys. A great get. Ooh, ah, lovely. well finished. Well finished. What we'll there. Four five. Uh, triple boost. Prince isn't taking advantage of there. There's more on coming in, but looking for the volley. Oh, good yeah, drop. That's a nice counter. And out, 6-4. You certainly get rewarded with having a tight drop here. You do, but you also get it, you get punished if you go short and it's not accurate. So we saw yes. that one. It's a good length. Off the back wall and... Mm, needs more depth. Backhand wall rally. Oh, uh, he waited. Oh. He waited for it to go tight there. Seven four. It's a frustrating feeling. Mm. You feel we have time on the ball, but you wait just a second too long. Big point. This one. Will the feel? The feel needs to win this. Yeah, it's a key point. Down. 8-4. Uh, now we have an 8-4 lead to Brits. Commanding position in the second game. He'll feel that he really should convert this. Here's the position. And uh, taking Shot. it in. That's good 9-4. JP's certainly constructing his rallies a lot better. 
Yeah, he's now he's ahead in this game. He is. He's get, getting a better length at the moment, and he's eliminated the mistakes from his game. 10-4. Game ball. In contrast, Ulifi has hit a couple of quite mistakes. cheap, cheap tins in this game, mm. which he'll be unhappy with. It's a oh, nice hold. Didn't see it. Yeah. 11 4, game to Brits. Yeah, game one game more. One all now. One all it is. In the growth point, SA National 2022 finals. Just to remind you that those you don't know how all these players qualified from eight different regions from around the country, they represent the top eights and they play right through until Sunday, win or lose, until we finally get Right, and we are back here in the quarterfinal between and JP Brits and Ron Ulifi. Games are set at one all. The crucial third game. Many of you who have played the sport will know that if you have a best of five match that's tied at one all, the third game is crucial in deciding the outcome of the match. So let's see how these two respond. No oh. let's. Oh, no, it's a and up uh, too low. I can see why the referee no, has the given the ball was deep, and you needed to go behind him. You couldn't have taken the it ball, on the volley. And the ball was already passed him, and he went the for the man there. One all left. But the ball's so hot, it stays up for so long. It could have got it. Possibly. But you're quite right. He went for the player. That's what it looked like. That's Ooh, a great game. Slipped. Uh, but he's three low. JP, Good start from Ulifir in this third. I thought Zoe in the last game, he, he lost a bit of intensity. His length wasn't as good as it, was, as it was in the first, and there were a couple of unnecessary mistakes. It was almost like he dropped his head and lost his confidence, and then sort of he lost his flow and confidence in those rallies, playing those shots and made those mistakes. Squash is like that. It's oh such man. a mental Quite game. Indeed. Full low. You can see the poor error from the back of the court by Brits. The drop from the back or the long drop. I've got that scoring correctly there. It's three left to Ulifi. Oh, a nice nick. Oh, he's got it. 
Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, yeah. uh, chaos. <laughs> oh. There's some slipping and sliding as well. Yes, let's. But oh. just need to be a little bit oh. more careful around a completely different scenario. It's a terrible situation to have Fall a situation left. we've got a let. That's frustrating. Uh, but that certainly was an entertaining rally. Quick reactions, good hands from both players in the front of the court there. And you just see the skill. The skill actually, as you say, quick hands and the speed. They're moving in and out with that strength and balance. It takes years of training, everyone. This is good for if he's getting volleyed in. Uh, oh. Five love, right. Sort of this game very well, will you feel? Five love lead. To Ruan, again, to don't Ruan. forget. To the Ruan. score is wrong. <laughs> JP hasn't got five points. It's <laughs> zero points to JP Brits and five to Ruan. Olivia. Olivia. No me, let. My accent. And out, one five. No let. The referee felt that shot from Go Brits was Come too on. good there. And then Brits is on the board in this third. Just taking a moment. To dry off. I said it's very hot down there. Very yeah. hot and wet and sweaty. Maybe also just taking a moment to mentally reset himself. He hasn't started this third game well. No. It's a good length. I think well, if he's there and uh, pass with a chance maybe to go short. Both looking for the volley. No. Oh. Stroke to Olufir. And they've given and a stroke to Olufir. Loose shot from Brits. Right down the middle. It did right look harsh the from this Six angle. But yeah. Perhaps, but it wasn't, it wasn't a good shot. Sometimes no. the referees do. It was loose and he was with a, within a step of it. No, right. very all different points. 6 1. As I, oh, as I think the viewers can hear there, the, refer, the referee was saying it was a loose shot. It's the stroke. 6 1 to Rowan. Oh. Oh, so this is an excellent third game Seven one so left. far. And when he's up, as we know, he just goes through like a train, huh? That he does. Oh, uh, Brits is on his bike here. Oh, that's tight. This is a very dynamic rally. Oh, it is. Yes. And out, 2-7. Right, yeah, no one. surprise the referee's given a stroke there. So I think for Ulifir there, he made Br Brits do a lot of work. He can be happy with what he's forcing into Brits' legs at the moment. Mm. Oh, oh no! 3-7. It's the right shot. I've got to give a shout out there to a friend of mine, Daniel Thompson. I don't know if you're listening. <laughs> no one ever made a backhand drop failure look as good as you did, mate. <laughs> Straight to Brits, 4-7. A couple of two points here from Ulufi. He's just got to reset himself. He doesn't want his lead to shrink any further. He's breathing hard though. He's been working very hard. He can't afford to take his foot off the pedal now. Oh, behind the back. Wow, okay. Uh, the crowd will love that. Oh, they're quiet. <laughs> Taking it in. Uh, back into the rally. This is really good from Ruan. No let. Uh, and out here. He's given a no let. Judge that to be a winner. Uh, minimal interference. Eight Great four. rally from Willefier though. Yeah, he Lots had to go get it. Made. Eight Let's do a lot of deep lunges. And JP's not happy about that call. Hopefully he's going to get his head together and not let it affect him. You can't afford not to at this stage. Mm. The opening. Ah, uh, Trevor. Trevor triple both five bricks there. Hand out. Five eight. Let's go, Jeff. Kept his head. So will it be with a three point lead? That was a big point, that. Indeed. Yes, let. A bit of traffic around the middle. Five eight. Yes, let. Mm. 
So JP's been on the on the back foot in this game. What do you think he needs to do to, clo to, to close this lead? Well, you just can't afford to do loose shots. I mean, you just, you just got to tighten up. Yeah, Prince was a bit fortunate there. I've seen the referee gave that as a lip, but I've seen those given as strokes. Yes, and JP can't afford those loose shots. Because as you said, that could have been a strike the other way. And yeah, it's too expensive. Off the back wall, what does Brits do here? Oh, it's a great get. Good hold again. Uh, it's a nice attack and combo by Brits. 6 8. It's the type of squash we'll have to produce to get back on level terms in this third. It's tight on the wall. Ben and he has down. Yes, winner. And out nine six. Not a bad time to produce a shot like that. Mm -mm. Gone in for the volley. It served Ruan well coming in for the ball early. That's a good hold there, making out. Extra, extra work, and he also was gifted by ten the six. Game ball. So. Four game balls here to Ulefir. He'll want to convert this and then carry his momentum through to the fourth. Brits, I think, in the situation when you down a few couple game balls, you want oh. to Brits. Got a stroke and out, seven, ten. You want to try, f game even ball. if you're far a couple of points down, you want to try finish a game well. So even if you lose, you feel good going in for the next game. And if you manage to then get a couple of points together, in the scoreboard pressure back on your opponent. Oh, Red is. Oh. oh. Oh, and he sent him the wrong way. the wrong way, but he's now yeah, the ball's still getting up there. Oh, goodness. Exciting rally, this one. Oh, that's risky. That's it's a, a good shot. That's a good straight lob from Brooks there. Both players seen the ball quite late in this rally. And that court, and we tend to do that. Oh, that's a nice boast. Oh, it's, oh, it's a great attacking boast. 11 7, game to Olivia. Olivia leads two games seven. to one. Two games to one. Time. Olafia leads two games to one. Love all. 
Welcome back to this men's quarterfinal match between Juan Ulifir and JP Brits. Ulifir leads two games to one. Played an excellent third game. Let's see if Brits can respond. All right, both got new shirts on. Let's go, JP, come on. So uh, Ruan in the out. right. Yeah, one love. Both do tend to sweat quite a bit, so. Well, that's, it's hot down that's there. That's no it's surprise. Hot. They're working hard. That they are, that they are. Being two games at two one up for Ruan actually works in his favour. As we were saying, he's such a confidence player. This is where he wants to be. Indeed. Of course, everyone wants to be in this position, but with him, it's it's a, a huge advantage yeah, mentally. It's, it's even more consequential if you give him a lead than have some other players. Yeah. Not if he oh. does stuff like Too that. Too low. Oh, that was risky. Yeah, quite a cheap turn. He'll be upset with himself. Yeah. And JP is just going to calmly keep playing on. It's a good man for Udafir. <laughs> uh, a lot of work for JP Brits. Hand out, it one, two. It's a well constructed rally, that. That was good, good thinking. Yeah, a nice reset. Sort of game to left down. That's what Too this all. court does do. If you hit a drop shot, a backhand drop like that, that doesn't bounce into the sidewall and it goes down the wall. It can really stick to the sidewall. There's not really much you can do to get the ball back. No, and there's that loose panel there as well, which is a bit awkward. Is that up? It looks like... Three, it. two. That's a good shot. All of a sudden, will it quickly two love down, three, two up. And this fourth. He is using the straight drop to great effect on both sides. Brits will have to improve his length. He can't let him if you keep taking the ball in short like that. Oh, that's a great shot. He's really going for his Four shot. 4-2. On the drop there. Oh, like you say, he is a confidence player. Mm. Roaring through him at the moment. <laughs> he could boast. Stroke to Olufia. Yeah, I got away Five two. There. Right. Uh, flick drop to the front of the court. Gave Brits an opening, but he sent the ball straight back at himself. So Brits has got to again get some length back here and slow Olufia down. Oh. Trevor shot down the middle. Yeah. That's and out three five. Go, JP, come on. That, that was a big point. Could not afford to go 6 2 down in this whole game. Oh, clever shot. Oh, that's a oh. oh. oh that's he a went for it. That's a fantastic Didn't rally. Hand out. Six that's good. Three. He played it. Yeah, took he, the winner. He could have tried to manufacture a decision in his favor, but he played through it. Yeah, good. It worked for him, for sure. Oh, they're holding their shots a bit here. Um. No let. Hand out. 4-6. Oh. Minimal interference. What is, what is there was a bit of a bounce, but there was plenty of bounce. You need to go and get it. Hand out. 4-6. Off the volley there. That's a strange ask. If I was him, I would just have waited for the ball for the back wall and then played. He's been doing that so well the last two games. Yeah. That's strange. 4-6. Really I'd say he still has the lead. 6-4. Both of them are trying to attack the, the front of the court from behind the opponent a lot more. 5-6. Come on, JP, come on. As the, as the ball softens up, maybe it wasn't a surprise. Certainly getting a lot of points off that backhand drop from the back. Back again. Down. Good, good pressure from Hand the out, there. seven five. Quick point, this one. Oh, he goes for cross court, Nick. Goodness. Oh. 
Hand out. Six, seven. Six, seven. Oh, and he's got an ace. <laughs> Seven all. Who would have guessed? They do happen in squash, even at this level. Yeah. Oh, that's a good, yeah. strong vote on, from Bully Fee. And out, eight, both, seven. Yeah. He's three points off of here. Is he going to start feeling the, the pressure of the scoreboard? Oh, sitting up. Oh, it's a bit of a trickle burst. You could have done more with it. Oh, nine seven. Oh, for a second, I thought that was done. I did too. Well, but, but okay. You, neither player disputed it, so clearly. Clearly, it was up. Yeah, I was about to say, well, if you've got in a glass arm, but what do I know? <laughs> Oh, this is good stuff. Just going in for the ball early. Oh, is that down? Down. Ten sevens, right? Time on the ball. Match oh, ball. Oh, that was expensive. Three match balls to one early fee. The biggest place in the semi-finals of this year's nationals. Let's see how does he play at this point. So we're we going to get cross court. Nick, is he going to get match ball first time? <laughs> Well, he's been attacking very well, so I'll continue to do that. Whether I would go for a cross with Nick, I'm not so sure. Ooh, that's tight though. Look at that. Oh, uh, and he's running. Oh. Hard work. Down. Oh. Uh, 11 7. Match to Olafir. Olafir wins three games to one. Very good. Very very good. 11, four, four, 11, 11, 7. 11, 7. result for Ron. 3-1. He's back into the semi-finals like he was last year. Let's give him a hand. Absolutely, you want to win a tournament, you've got to beat all comers, right? And um, is it an off-season for you after this, or are you going to go on to the PSA Tour? Or what's, uh, what's Ruan Olafia's plan for the second half of the year, the back half of the year? Uh, so, I think we've got three PSAs coming up in October. Uh, so I'll be keeping them in for those. Um, I'd like to say I'm going to get an off-season in over December, but I would like to go to Europe and test myself against the best players in the world. 
And um, in terms of your progress from seeing you at the last time I saw you play was at the national camp before we were supposed to go to the world teams. To now, are you happy with your progress? Yeah, 100%. Um, my body's finally sorted out uh, from the issue where I kept breaking down. Um, and yeah, got a consistent three, four months of training for the first time since, I don't know, when I was in Hello? Sorry, <laughs> we lost you. All right, well listen, good luck for the semi-finals. Um, I hope your dreams come true. That was some of the best squash I've seen you play in terms of the consistency over a period of time. And if you keep that up, uh, I'm pretty sure you'll achieve your dreams. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Ron Ophir. And she plays for Northerns. She's currently ranked number one in her province and coached by Liz McKenzie. She likes writing, music, and going to the movie and cinema. And she quite enjoys spaghetti bolognese, apparently. She's an awesome young talent. Her name's Helena Kutsia. Her opponent plays for SACD. We've seen that before. We've seen the number three. We've seen the number two. She is the number one. She is the current national champion, growth point champion from 2021. She started playing squash at the age of six years old by following her parents to the courts all the time. She likes running, squash, gaming, anything to get the heart racing. And her favorite movie of all time is Dirty Dancing or Having Salad and Chicken. Her name's Lizelle Miller. She has some support, I see. Once again, thanks to all our sponsors. And please remember we live streaming this.
Growth Point SA National PSA Tournament Ladies quarterfinal match between Helena Katsia to serve, Zell Muller to receive, best of five games, a ball. Good afternoon and welcome to the South African Squash National Championship for 2022. Joining us for this ladies quarterfinal match between Lazelle Muller and Helena Katsia. My name is Michal Lombard and I'm joined by Zoe Dobach. Afternoon to you again, Zoe. Hello, everyone. Hello, Miguel. So this is going to be exciting. They've already started their first rally, and it's a nice long rally as well. So Lizelle is the defending champion. She won this tournament last year, and is the number two seed this year. Lena is the number. Her national Current rank ranking. is yeah. number eight. She is also the South African University's champion. She won the individual USA event in Makanda in early July. So I'm sure she will be eager to see what she can do against a very experienced Miller here. Come on, three love. And both, again, as in the previous players and almost every player we've seen so far, got interested and inspired by squash by their parents. So Miller is from a squash family. Her father plays, and then her. She has two younger brothers who also play. Rudy van Nikerk. Who's the top player and the defending men's champion and number one seed in the men's event, Dierwald van Nikkerk. So, squash excellence clearly runs in the family there. And now it's 1 3. Well, she's on the board now. She can start settling in. I haven't actually seen her Lienard play too much, so I'm curious as to what exactly her type of style is. You know, Lazelle is very consistent. She doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Strike to Muller. Two, three. And she has a lot of experience at this level. So this very much is a bit of a battle between youth and experience. And look at where the sun is there on the backhand. Yeah, that might complicate things. That's a good length by him. Could see her there. And out for two. Nice drop, straight Hello. in the neck. Good stuff. And so these two have played, it, to my knowledge, at least four times before, and Miller has won each of those matches. But the last one was in the Growth Point IPT last year, which was a 3-1 victory to Miller. So as I'm sure Kutsi has improved no, in the last year. Four all. Left side. It is a psychological no, advantage one. though, you know. But then again, you can get on court, nothing to lose. And that's dangerous. Exactly. Four all, nothing in, in this first game. I was going to say, I'm losing it completely on that <laughs> backhand there. <laughs> yes, Ned. Mm, need more length four. there. Could see it definitely seems to be hitting the ball lower and harder. That certainly seems to be her strategy. Yes, oh, Ned. Another strike. Oh. oh. I was okay. Could see it there, I just have to put the ball away. Mm. There's always a small chance in a situation like that that the referee does not give you a stroke. Certainly forcing the players to play the ball, which is what you do want as long as it's safe. That's a good shot, I can see her there. Out of court. Yeah. Let's see how long it takes somebody to find the ball this time. In the last match, someone ran off with it. We got a new ball. <laughs> yeah, have a little souvenir. <laughs> oh. oh, goodness, it's up here. No, then throw it on court. Oh, okay. Oh, it's on the other side of the court. Ah, here it is. Oh, there it is. It's returned. That was Six by four. us. Oops. 
You should have seen it. <laughs> we're, we're, we're busy watching the stream. Yes. For those who don't know, we're oh, actually upstairs on the top balcony. That's a great shot by Garcia. Let's see if she can further this lead here. She certainly started well. And she's certainly putting on the pressure. That's a nice fade, cross court drop. Eight, four. It's quite a precocious play that's coming through from Helena, and it's working. Yeah, she's hitting the ball with, with a lot of a lot of pace. Oh, this is, I say, that Miller does now <laughs> five <laughs> eight. <laughs> but on a court where you sometimes don't see the ball as early as you do on others because of the color, that might be a good strategy to use. If you can hit the ball hard with speed and your opponent sees it late, you will be rewarded. Yeah. Oh, that's an expensive mistake. Yeah, and out. Nine five. Nine five. Nine five. Down. That was yes, it was yeah. Ten five. Game ball. Game ball. That's a quick, quick first game here, and Elena Kutsia has five game balls. Out. Out, and that's the first game to Kutsia. 11 5, 5, game to Kutsia. Good start Kutsia from the One game to love. It was. Uh, but I remember a couple when I played on this court in, in Victoria a couple of years ago. Play will resume in 60 seconds. Level. Welcome back to this ladies' quarterfinal between Helena Kutsia in the blue, who was one love up, and Lazar Miller, the defending champion. Sorry, that was a very good and confident start from Helena. As I speak, she And out one love. It was, and she was quite precocious on court in the sense of actually getting in there, being cheeky and hitting and going for the shots and almost disrupting the zone. It worked. Too low. This is a better start but she can't relax, yes. Not at all. This is a better start from Miller. Tactically, we could see her when she was doing the right thing there. She was getting the ball hard, quick. Not up. Yeah, the Three love. Yeah. This is a good start from Miller. We've got a lot of experience here, so Muller will not be allowing anything to upset her. She'll just settle, play on, change Four her strategy, up. and move forward. Well, she's done the basics better so far in, this, in the second game. Got the length and put volleys away. Yeah. Ball's gone again. Gone again. Uh, 
not seen red disappear to this time. Oh. Hand it's out. Back. We're One right. four. Big point there for Couture. You don't want to go five left down again. No. That's a good dent from below. Predictable with that drop. And Still up. This is a good rally. Down. Uh, shouldn't have left that. Hand out. I think five she thought it was going out, actually. Yeah. Perhaps she didn't see it because now <laughs> yes. the sun is really glaring off the back of the court, but also off the side wall. Oh, that's a great lob. It's going for the light. Oh, to the turn. Six one. Oh, she clipped the wall there. That was unlucky. I definitely think six one. Hmm? I definitely think for Miller, Kutsia is playing very fast and very hard. If Result no let use and out to six speed to lift the ball that might take some of a rhythm away. What do you think, though? I think so, and also what it means is that um, she's going to be working that much harder by putting all that pace and running. She's going to get tired. Helena is going to struggle keeping that up. Yes. Yeah, good and out seven two. So Lazol being cool and calm and using that pace. Any opportunity. Nice drop finish, but I could see her. And out 3 7. The opening. Oh, oh. that's a great finish. 4 best 7. Shot, best shot she's hit so far this game. High risk, but she got it. That's a bit tight. Cool. That's a bit 5 I'm not sure 7. She meant to hit a shot like that. Mm -mm. But you'll take those. Six, seven. Error. Left side. Yeah, we've gone from s we've gone from seven two to six seven. Mm. Can't afford the unforced errors at this stage. No. Yes, let six seven. Oh, oh, goodness, I thought that was going to go the other way. I did wonder myself. <laughs> It's a bit of a hand out eight six. Mm. You want to give your opponent patient, yeah. Yeah, you want to give your opponent momentum back. Nine six. Kill that was. And out yeah, seven and nine. Somebody cue the highlight reel. <laughs> Down. Cheap and out ten Usually seven. So Game three ball. Three volley drops, volleys that she's put in the tin now. Yeah, she's certainly living and dying by the sword this year. Mm. Opening from. <laughs> Oh, well, good get. Yes, let. 10 7. Game ball. Ooh, that could have gone the other way. Hula hasn't complained, though. She's no, I think she's just getting on with it. Yeah, she's focused on the task at hand. <laughs> 11 7. Oh, that's a good game to Muller. Game there from Muller. One game all. Slipping up and volleying. One game all.
Muller to serve. Level. Welcome back to this ladies' quarterfinal between Lizelle Muller and Helena Kutsia. At one game all, Zoe, what do you think both of these players need to do in this third game? Well, I think with Helena, she's got the right strategy of being really quite cheeky and going for shots, but she kills. Oh. Whoa! <laughs> That's and close. Uh, one love. The, right on the money there, a little, a little <laughs> trip, reverse angle. She's yes. Too young to use that shot. But it's good, it's a cheeky all, shot, it works, but she all. can't do that in every single rally. I think you, you can use it, scatter it in there, but it's... Out. it's you, you can't do it in every rally, you know, the, some of those rallies have got to be just pure basic squash. And then spatterings of that cheekiness and coming in, the precociousness coming in. Agreed, I think she needs to... That's a nice return. And out to two all. Tactics are good she has to be a little bit more controlled but when she uses them and when she decides to rally it's, yeah. a, it's a great shot remember Lizelle's experienced enough to just absorb it and just continue and be consistent and steady do you think that's what Lizelle going to continue to do in this match yes because she's not taking risks three two can we see if someone takes an early volley it doesn't necessarily have to be a good shot but if some the players don't see the ball and get rewarded for it. Very much so. Hand out, three all. Nothing in it, one all, three all. Oh, they saw it late. Yeah, and out, see four, them. three. Mm -hmm. It's a danger. If you can hit that return wall, you set yourself up for success. Down. And out That's four. Risky all. there going for a low hard shot that far behind the service box. Yeah. Oh, that's tight. Got it. Didn't find a length there. Oh, that's a cheap it was the right error. shot. Five it was the right four. shot though. It's the right shot, but a cheap error. Yeah. Oh, saw that late too. And yeah. out, five all. Stayed, f stayed quite far forward. Yeah, neck and neck in this third game still. Good return. Strike oh, tomorrow. Uh, yep. Six five. Can't good see a respond here. He's right in it. I think there's all there's all s oh, I won't and say what was six say all. <laughs> <laughs> say it anyway. <laughs> I was gonna say she's experienced enough to not make the mistakes and, and really, you know, calmly go through. Yeah. I certainly wasn't expecting mistakes that quick like that. Yeah, it's been a bit of a p game of a as a pendulum where it's gone between winners and mistakes. But here we do have a, a rally of some substance. Yeah. Oh dear. Come on, come on, let's go. I like the idea. And now seven six. But you will mm. regret hitting the tin as always. <laughs> the good gets from Kutsia doing a lot of running. There's the volley. Oh. That's a very nice point. And out, seven all. It hit the neck, but it sat up, so she got it. Yeah. Great return on that. Neither player can really get a lead seven. here in this third, neck and neck. Yeah. Will the more experienced Muller take the opportunity now? This is sometimes where the more experienced players show that. You can go to a shop and you can buy a pie, out. but you can't buy experience. Yeah. And out, eight all. But <laughs> eight ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, all the same for some of the Cape Townian squash players. That <laughs> yeah. that's a good man. What did she do here? Oh, on the back end. Tight down. Come on, yeah. let's come on. Hand out nine eight. Uh, 
shot. Onto the racket. Uh, an eight. Two oh, game balls game from Lizard Miller. It's like a two one lead. Can't return like that. Can't return like that. It's too too dangerous. The opening. Was that down? Yes, it was. 11 8. Oh, oh dear. Most she error. Mm -mm. Well, giving Lizard Miller a 2 1 lead. We said that Lazar would actually come through calmly. That's what happened in the end. Miller leads two games to one. Love all. Welcome back to this ladies' quarterfinal between Lizar Miller and Lena Kutsia. Lizar's 2 1 up, Zoe, but I think the younger player shouldn't be discouraged. That was a very close third game. Very much so, and, and this game can be anyone's. I really, I really don't know which way to call it, but. I think either player has just got to focus on and not making mistakes. Low. Both of them. Yeah, there were a lot of mistakes in that in that third. But I definitely feel that out. Oh dear. See, these are unforced errors. It's it's expensive for both players. I Too definitely low. feel that Muller is vulnerable again, so could see that just has to put in a good fourth game and then try to see what happens in a fifth. Yeah. She could take good get there from Muller. Great length. Do a scramble there, but she's through. Oh dear. Oh, she's gone around. Good. This is one of the better rallies of the match so far. Oh, volley drop. Yep. She saw it. Ooh, sent the wrong way. Elena's doing a lot of work here, but she's she she's is. on it. Oh, uh, yeah. unforced error. Uh, easy mistake. And out one oh, two. After all that work. Will she live to regret that? Because she did excellently to stay in that point. Oh, that looks cut. Okay, oh. ref's happy with it. <laughs> Oh, uh, another error. error. Uh, to all. Uh, that's unnecessary. Yeah. Certainly living and dying by the sword here, Lena Kutsia. Mm. Uh, so oh, that, that's that is the one that she was and going for in the previous three, point. Two. Yes, but you can't make two errors just for that one point. Y you know, it needs to be a little bit more consistent. Could get. Nice. Look and find the length. Excellent volley. This is very aggressive from Kutsia. Nice lob there. And? And out. Stop running. Three all. Good point from Muller there. She really absorbed a lot of pressure. But Helena looked like she gave up. Perhaps she's feeling it physically. Mm -hmm. There have been longer points in this 
fourth game. Well, she went for that shot, and probably, but it three. paid off. Let's see if Kutsia can get a bit of a lead here. Good, good shot. Work. She worked Five for that. And she got it. She did. I do wonder if she shouldn't use some height from the front of the court when she's under pressure. If she's and running in and, and going at 100 miles an hour, that, must, mm. that would be physically taxing. And you can see her breathing from here. She's got a moment now. And stays in. Yeah. Good length uh, by yeah. Miller. Fantastic shot. Five all. Moving to the mid stage of this fourth game. That's uh, a oh. poor Can't make those. It's going to be two one down. Yeah. And out six all. Important point for could see her there. Didn't want to want to go down seven five. Mm. Mm. So you can Zoe, you can see there she saw the ball. And right. out seven yeah. six. Yeah. Six all. Seven six. Remember we were at this point before and Rizal had the upper hand when it's close towards the latter stages of the game. Yes, yeah, so and that third just used her experience. Yeah. Opportunity in the front here. Oh! Strokes and more. Yeah, that'll be a stroke. 8-6 left. All set up just enough. 8-6 mm. here to Muller. Will she keep going for it? You could see it's got a buckle down here. Not cool. make an error. Hopefully yeah. she won't go for a high risk shot off the serve now. There we go, that's good. That's a good length. Nice rally. Yeah, this is a good rally. And the opportunity. Oh, uh, it's good length. That uh, was the wrong choice there, the trickle burst. That was very high. Nine, mm. six, six right side. Doing. Two points away, Miller. It's a good return. Oh, and in the uh, ten. the ten. Ten, six. Match ball. spot in the semis four match balls okay we're just rallying down the backhand and over to the forehand that's very sensible from Miller gonna make her opponent beat her she's been making mistakes so far yeah Oh, no. Oh, in it. Oh, uh, she's done a freshie. Match to Muller. Oh. Three games and to one. Yeah. Great match. Rizal Muller. 11, 11, Three seven, games to one. 11, and eight. Then the seven the defending champion. Fantastic. Well played, ladies. Congratulations, Rizal. Let you catch your breath. Let you catch your breath. Result, well played. Thank you. She's tough. Huh? She doesn't go away. <laughs> no, she doesn't. She doesn't like that. What's that? Uh, uh, 
Speedy Gonzalez. Okay, yeah. Keeps coming, coming, coming. It was very evident for me watching from the outside that it was um, your experience that told in the end. How close do you think she's got from last year to this year? Has she improved? Have you improved? Uh, I think the score last year between us was also she took the first one and then I came back. Um, I think it is the experience. Um, she made a lot of mistakes um, at the end when it counted. Um, she has improved a lot. I think all these youngsters have, have improved a lot. Uh, I think since Jarvis, I have improved a little bit. Two months, I'm happy. <laughs> well, well done. Um, she's won the, uh, she won the, the, the inter-university inter individual title, which was, uh, was a good result for her. So um, what's it like being back in Cape Town, back on the all-glass court, uh, defending your title? Always good to be back in Cape Town. I'm not going to say I do like this court. I don't. Um, squash for me is different on this court, but uh, yeah, experience pulled in. Uh, defending my title, I'm literally just taking every match as it comes. Um, I'm here to have fun. Um, uh, last year I thought I was gonna, it's going to be my end, but I kept pushing, so I'm here I am again. Well, congratulations. It's wonderful having you back here. Hopefully you can keep coming back year after year after year. That would be good. No more children. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it's awesome to see you. You're looking in good, Nick, and good luck for the semifinals. Lizelle Miller, everyone. He's currently ranked number three in the country. And he's coached by Jimmy Slubush and Calvin and Lovu. He likes racquetball and video games. He has the nickname Innes. And his favorite movie is The Green Mile. His name's Tristan Worth. And once again, the referee for your match is Alex Hewitson. We are live streaming on the platform of Squash SA's Facebook, Facebook, Facebook page, excuse me, and on YouTube. Please tune in, send the messages out far and wide.
Remember them tomorrow we back. The growth point is an extra semi-finals and the five to one youth matches will begin. Starting time, 11.40 a.m. Right through until 5, 5.30 in the afternoon. If you are needing a coffee, Starbucks got you covered. Please go support them. Twenty twenty two growth point SA Nationals PSA tournament for the final match between Tuboki Mohoklo to serve, Justin Worth to receive, best of five games, level. Good afternoon and welcome to the South African Men's National Squash Championships for twenty twenty two. This is the men's quarterfinal match between Tristan Wirth and Tiboki Mokho. We'll be joined by me, Michael Lombard, to take you through this match. A little bit of a freshie by Tiboki on that first shot. This will be a very intriguing match. Mokho has been the national champion before, in 2018. He has also represented South Africa in the World Team Championships at number one. Tristan Worth is the current South African Universities Champion. He won the USA event in Makanda in July of this year. And he has and out to one. rapidly climbed the national rankings in the last two years. Yes, that's two one. I'm not really sure how to call this one because I haven't seen Hall play in the last couple of years. He has always been known for a very fluid, effortless movement. Worth is a quirky player who likes opening the court up. So it should present an interesting clash of styles. I think it's just first couple of rallies. Yes, let two one. The way that Tristan Worth plays is. He does have a bit of an eccentric swing at times, and he really likes opening the court up. Uh, and out and to all. Then likes anticipating his opponent's counter attack, and because of his speed, he's able to recover very well when he's out of position. As you can see there, he's not scared to take the ball at the front. While that does work for him, it is quite risky. And if he plays an opponent who moves very freely, like Mohor did at his best, that can hurt him as well. So I am interested to see how this is going to go. And out 3 2. So far, nothing in it. And usually it's for professional or, or senior players. It looks like Worth is playing with down a. And out 3 all. Both. Worth thought his ball was good, but the ref put it down. He was playing with glasses. Not the pickup was fine on the front wall, clipped the tip. Discard those after they've finished school. So that's a bit unusual. Yeah, front wall was down, just clipped it, pickup was fine. 3 2. A bit of confusion there, pointing the horn. Down. And out, 4 3. That's 
a nice attack by Williams from there. Three. Had space to attack the front of the court. Yes, let. Five three. Left side. Thank you. Right. Called by Worth there. And out four five. Let's see if Tabalking can get into this first game. Bit of a tentative start from both players. A couple of winners, a couple of mistakes. there from Wolf didn't come off but he stayed in the rally yes let four five yeah, that's risky from worth there playing a post off of a serve he is able to recover with his speed but I think if Mopo is able to really attack Strike to goes on Hotlo. That will end up being Five all quite left. tiring for Worth and their stroke because Mahlo hit Worth. Five all in this first game. Oh, that's a nice counter drop by Worth into the next hand out. Six five. Great return by Mopoa there all. on a glass court like this where it's a bit difficult out. to see the ball. Uh, and he served out. Hand out. 7-6. 10 push-ups there for him. He will not be happy that he's done that. <laughs> and he replies with a drop shot. Hand out. 7-all. Not a lot of rhythm to this match so far. Oh, the reverse angle. Attacking chance for Worth. Kind of drop on floor. Into the turn. Head out 8 7. A flick by Worth. He's got away with that. 9-7. I definitely think that the, the shorter rallies and disruptive play favors Worth. He really is good at playing that style of game. He's built a lead here in this first. And he's hitting that dead spot there. 10-7. There's, there's game a ball. dead spot in the on the backhand wall there, close to what we call the sixth corner. It's up there, just dies. Gives Tristan Worth three game balls. And there's a mistake by Mahal. 11-7, game to Worth. One to love. Worth leads one Tristan game Worth. to love.
Welcome back to this men's quarter final between Tristan Worth and Tabokin Paul. This is a very open squash so far. One game to love to Worth, but I feel that if McLaw can better capitalize on these short opportunities that Worth is giving to him, he'll definitely get back into this match. Stranger of that one. And out, one love. Seems to have all the time in the world until it fits in. Oh, it's a nice finish by Worth. And out, so one all. Tight shot, and then buried into the neck. Lucky there. 2 1. Uh, those of us who have played squash all know that situation. Frustrating. But we'll take that. 3 1. Not a good, not a good shot there by McCall. I feel, I feel that he shouldn't be f forcing himself to try and do something cr crazy with the racket. With is going Four, to open one. the court up to give him the, his opportunity. So. I pulled a couple of rallies here. That was him. Oh, I went for something quite audacious and out, there. And out, 2-4. Worth is not Ama Shabana, so I'm not sure he should be trying that again. Well, that's out. the second time in this match that Tabok is served out. And out, 5-2. He will be happy with himself. That's a nice kill. And out, 3-5. Short points and in out. the second game and so out. far. And out, 6-3. A bit of a strange match so far. Yep. And out, 4-6. Oh, didn't bother to run there. That's a good shot by McClaw. Good Five, six. He doesn't look like he's feeling that great on court so far, but he's only one point off worth at the moment. So if you can just keep going, he might place a stake in the second game. Good boast and a trickle. Nice flick down the wall there from Worth. Very open squash this. Not, not up. The referee's called that and down. And down five. That was a bit inconclusive from certainly from where I'm sitting. What's that? Didn't appear like it. 7 5. Worth is certainly making the floor work into the front of the court, but he is opening the court up and giving the floor angles. The floor is a bit more clinical on his attacks, like his attempt to be there. Definitely in this match. Held and gone deep. Oh, that's a great shot. Balanced stretch. Eight five. Drop shot right. by Worth.
tight. Nine five. Sure that wasn't worth losing control of the second game. Just two points off it. Yes, let's nine five. Gone for a cheap one there. Doing there. <laughs> Ten five game ball. It's gotten away with it. Wasn't sure that was up, but Tristan Worth in control. Yeah, he's uh, eleven five. Two games to work. Moment, Worth leads. Two, two games worth. still up. Two games up. Worth leads, two games to love. Love all. Welcome back, Tristan Worth, the South African University's champion, serving a two games to love up against Bokim Lahore, the former national champion. Oh, that's a great shot into the nick. One love. been in control of this match so far. Lahore definitely has it in him to respond. He just has to find a rhythm. Guessing, but guessing right. Two love. Mr. Bahoshlo has to replace his racket as his strings are broken. Bahoshlo's racket is just, he's just replacing his racket. Not sure if it's his strings or if he has broken it, but we'll need a new one. But he really has to find a response here. He lets Worth gain any more points. Get the feeling that Worth might run away with this third game. He's confident. He started this third game as well. Three love. Well, I thought that was going to go to the neck, but. Jump right out. Five love. Five love. Quickly. He's in a very yeah, commanding five. position here. And 
and Ms. Pahlo does something quite drastically different. It's, it's, like it's only ending in one way. Has that gone up? Six low. Oh, geez, the very rarely seen backball boast winner. One of the rarest shots in squash. But worth just did it there. Everything does seem to be coming off for him. Seven love. Another turn there. And out, 1-7. There's Toboki on the board in this third. Can he might some resistance here? Can he present it? Let's see. Oh, well, just using his speed there to cover. Exchanges in this front corner. Good defensive work by both players, but with and up eight one. Right, are hitting the winner there. Out. Oh dear. Both players having served out here. And this really is and the last chance for eight. Paul to present any kind of fight back and resistance. But it doesn't look like the. Just in his disruptive style. Not up, thank you. Really hurting him, yes. And out, 9 2. Well, top spin drop. And out, 3 9. Left from the back, a couple of exhibition shots. We were only two points away from the victory, though. We can't afford to do that. 4-9. We made a couple of mistakes. Nice shot there. And that was 10-4. Match 4. Giving him match points. Oh, and he's at a rolling goal. 4 to win. Match to Earth. That's Three games to low. Semi-finals for Tristan Worth. 11-7. 11-5. 11-4. There we have it, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. That's our third men's quarterfinal. Just a word, thanks for coming to me. Three love. Have a check. You uh, you happy with that performance? Well, of course. Yeah, <laughs> I played really well. Thanks. You've um, you've had a good year. Last year you arrived here and you lost in the quarterfinals to Ruan Ulufiu, who's just gone through to the semis. You were think you were ranked six in the country then. You're now three in the country. You're also the SA University's champion as well. Uh, it's your second year studying. Happy with your progress and uh, how close are you getting to number one? Um, yeah, I think I had a better year this year as well. I'm progressing louder. Okay. Um, I think I'm progressing quite nicely. Um, for me, it, the main goal was just on this first round again or at this tournament. Um, but yeah, I think I'm playing a lot better than last year, more adjusted, and yeah, hopefully I can go all the way. <laughs> so in your opinion, learning from last year to this year, a young man at your age, there's a lot to learn. What do you think is the, the biggest squash aspect that you think that you're working on have improved in your game from the learnings that you've got in the last 12 months? Besides fitness, <laughs> um, I think mentally, I th coming from juniors, I didn't need to prepare as much for tournaments. I thought I can just go in and play really well, but it's not like that in the big ranks. You really have to prepare sometimes like a week in advance to really think about your game. But so mentally for me, it's a big step up. Well, listen, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun watching you play. You do a lot with the squash ball. 
and uh, slotting nicks and things like that. It's entertaining. Not everybody can play that way. They don't have your prodigious talent and the ability to, to play squash in that fashion. Is that something that you think you always want to keep in your game? Or is it something that you think gets you into trouble every now and then? Or is it a, a real strength that you feel that no one else has? I think it's uh, the best of both worlds. Uh, sometimes it um, gets me into a lot of trouble. But um, there's days when I play very really structured people, it can work in my favor. But um, all depends on the day how much I use it or don't show it. Well, Tristan, I for one am looking forward to your progress. I think you are a wonderful squash player. You're a wonderful young man. And uh, I hope you go all the way. Uh, not maybe this year, but in the years to come. And uh, we wish you all the best for the semifinals. Well played. Tristan Worth, everyone. Right, we're on to our last ladies semi uh, quarterfinal, excuse me, of today for the National Growth Points SA National Finals. Please help me welcome a young lady onto court. She plays for Joburg Squash. She studies at UJ and she plays for Irene Squash Club in uh, Pretoria and for UJ. She started uh, playing squash at a pretty tender age of 12. She's coached by JP Brits and Mike Bester. She uh, loves a variety of sports, particularly hockey and tennis, and anything cooked by mom. The player she looks up to is world number one, Noor El Shabini. Her name is Tegan Roo. Her opponent is the current SA number one. She has been campaigning overseas and living overseas. We don't get to see a hell of a lot of her these days. She has got to a career high world ranking of number 30 in the world. She enjoys sushi, running and trail running. Not when she was 19, I can tell you now. But my goodness, has she developed. We look forward to seeing her play. She represents Western Province. Her name is Alex Fuller. Your referee, Alex Hewitson and Mario Stoltz.
2022 growth point is a national TSA tournament between Tegan Lutzov, Alexander Fuller to receive in the best of five games. Level. Good afternoon, everybody. Over here, the last of the ladies quarterfinals for the growth point SA Nationals for 2022. I'm sitting here with Celeste Tucker, um, co commentator today for this match between Alex Fuller, the number one seed, and Tegan Rue. Tegan has been playing the squash in Johannesburg, and uh, Alex overseas and based in Ireland at the moment. No let. Hand out, one love. Celeste, welcome. Thank you, Steve. I think Alex is looking in good condition. Eh? Love? She's obviously playing a lot of squash over in Ireland. Yes, and, and she's got very, very strong. And the last time I saw her play, um, probably a year ago, and she's definitely looking physically very strong. I know, she, yeah. Yeah, I know she does a lot of that sweat 100, um, which is high intensity training. So definitely yeah, looking she strong. Was, she was yeah, last when we played it at Brooklyn, and that's when she, she beat Lizelle in the final. Yes, no, and, and her shots... Full of. You know, she's never been the greatest shot player. She's always been a fantastic runner, but, you know, in the last two years, she says she's really come into her own with regards to her touch and, and her accuracy of her shots. Well, I think that could be based on overseas. It's a tough... And out, one four. Because of the bounce of the ball and most of it's at uh, close to the level, which is what she's played here. Growing up in Cape Town, so just worked on that. And out five one. Yeah, and I've been. I was chatting to her yesterday, and she said that you know be, she's been working with Angus Kirkland mm -hmm. and as well as Ricky Hill. They're both former PSA players, and she said they've really changed her game and and have helped her to to look to playing the, the right shot at the right time and not just any old shot, you know. So it's, she feels one. it's really, really helped her. Well, I think to get to 31 in the world, where she currently is, takes some doing. You know, it's um, consistent squash. And, and out. Ireland, Two six. Haven't, they haven't played much squash. Uh, in fact, I think they, they've only just started playing league coming out of COVID. Yeah. I think a lot of countries were a bit behind South Africa with regards to that. Um, because they still had high numbers. Yeah. And as you can see, she's sending Tegan all over the court. Yeah. And Tegan's uh, really good up and coming in she's, she's done well over the last couple of years. Yes, no, and, and She's also Three, one of those players that's extremely fit. She's she's got an incredible work ethic. Three, she trains very hard. Very dedicated. I think she was a hockey player as well at school, wasn't she? I'm not actually sure. Queenstown down the border area. Stroke to follow. And out. Seven three. Stroke. Yeah, I think uh, because. Alex is very quick onto the ball and definitely looks like the person is very much in their way. Oh, that's an excellent drop. 8-3. Isn't it wonderful to have this caught up again in the, in the mall and see all the people running around watching the squash and it's a real, you know, newbie squash or spectators that don't know what squash is all about or even what the band squash was. Some funny questions when they come past the division. Yeah, and, and, and at the juniors, you know, I had a lot of inquiries from people walking past about where the children three. can start playing. And, you know, that's the basic idea of having it in, a, in a, at a venue like this, is getting it, bringing it to the people. And, you know, I've referred quite a lot of player potential Out. learners to Sioli, um, who four does nine. the development chair. And, you know, that's exciting. We want people to to take notice and, and to start the game, especially the youngsters. 
Now there's one thing about Tegan, she's never going to give up and she's never going to think she's lost until the last that's, point. That's for sure. Head out, 10-5, game ball. Bother Tom, I guess. Well, it's amazing to see the youngsters through the years come up and chip away, chip away, and then once they get that first win over the, yeah. the, the top oh, players yeah. that they've got on a pedestal, then that's the end Down. of that, you know. 11-5, game to Fuller. Fuller leads one game to love. Okay, we're back in game number two with Alex. Fully leads uh, one game to love. Comfortably. Love all. Now I wonder what uh, Tegan's coach had to say. What she should change and how she can perhaps start getting the better of Alex. Another good uh, over here. One love. Played short there, lots of touch. Yeah, and if you watch Alex, she tends to place herself on the tee and and prefers to cut the ball off than to leave it. You often see the the juniors Too low. taking every ball and going back for it yeah. when they could actually. There's just that confidence is lacking. But that I think also is a trait of playing up country. Because the, the ball and out one two tends to get to the back quicker, so they're used to letting it go to the back. And that's also, we, whenever we went overseas and watched the blade squash, you, that was the most noticeable thing for the, of the, of the international players, was that they cut it for a lot Too all. more often. Yeah, they just take away the time from the opponent. But if you, if you hit like that shot that you can just play that little trickle burst, and stays in the front of the this court is very rewarding with that type of shot it's, it's a very true court even yeah. it's a little bit faster um, it's a very true court yes let to all yeah but that's why a lot of people don't like it because you know they're used to playing on these courts where the ball flies and everything comes up and yeah, if you play a decent game, it's, it's a lot more difficult to get out of the back yeah. corners. 3-2. Oh, another great length from And out, Alex. three all. She did a lot of preparation on this court. She, she did at least four to five hours prior Four, three. to the tournament. Oh, really? Okay. So, yeah. so she's obviously the, the ultimate professional. That's the way she's handling this. Well, yeah. I suppose she didn't come out here to, to lose the tournament. She came out here to win it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, look at that. Five, three. It's quite against that type of shot. But Tegan yeah. needs to lose one. So, 
It's the old story in squash, you know. It's not, a, not about how many good shots you play. It's about how few bad Six ones three. you Yeah, and you can just see, you know, she's chosen the right shot. She pummels it so hard that you've absolutely got no chance. Seven three. All the matches I've watched today, uh, that's been not. Uh, I don't know, a lot of a lot of players have made huge amounts of games. Eight three. Mm. Rather than actually winning the points, people are losing the points. Yeah, but I think what Alex did, <coughs> Strike to follow. I mean, to do a preparation is very important because somebody like Taboki did not step on the court once before he played his match and he made a lot of errors. His judgment was poor, the ball is, is, is a lot slower and he's not, um, his timing is not right and therefore a lot of errors crept into his game. 10-3. Game ball. Pretty one way traffic here, isn't it? Yeah, no, Alex definitely is cool. exceptionally strong at this point. I mean, look 11 at 3, the game to full of, full of leads, two games to love. Yeah. Well, that's two love now, and um, pretty one, one way traffic at the moment. Let's hope the TV can come out. We're back on the, th the third game here, um, this last ladies quarter final match. Alex Fuller, two lap up. And uh, looking like she's commanding the, the team. One love. She's playing good strokes, she's hitting the ball exactly where she wants to. Um, but as Celeste mentioned, she's coming with some proper preparation. Oh, that's a good shot there by Tito. And out one all. Loose one in the air by Alex and she just put that away nicely. One all. You know what I've noticed, Steve, is all the kids whose parents played, they grew up at the courts. They seem to always and have an edge when one. you start playing it as juniors because they already know where the right shot is. They seem to be a little bit cleverer than their counterparts who's who possibly just playing it at school and haven't watched Three, as one. much high level squash. And even with the juniors, you can see, you know immediately that that child's parents have, have and played out squash two, three. and they've watched this yeah. high level of squash. Uh, we'll, we'll see that in the next match. And out, 4-2. Give up for Mika. And his, his sisters through to the Sundays as well. The, the other brother was also here last year, got through to the, the Sundays. 
first, like my father was a really good squash player down there. So, yeah, you know, like you're saying, he's 100%, you know. I and mean, these two girls both started playing when they were younger than 10. So, they've obviously gone to the courts, watched their parents, listened to this ball banging up and down the walls. For Cutting it first. Five two. two this guy. Makes yeah. it to the left so much easier. Yeah, if you take Natalie Grange, I mean she grew up at Parkview Squash Courts. Right. Made her Six way to two. number one. She was always just so much cleverer than her, her counterparts, you know. No, so she, but she hit the she hit the ball much much more like a, like a Seven two. Female, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, she really was. was Big hitter. Eight, two. Nine, two, left. Oh, this is really quick. So Alex has won nine PSA tournaments. Oh, she's been playing overseas, and some, one or two local ones. I see uh, Tegan's also won five. I think there must have been one of the smaller ones that we had in South Africa. Yeah, Ten yeah. Two. So she's Match ball. Um, come down to the one they had here. She's played these two in Pretoria. And um, yeah, between last year and this year, she's she's won a few. Not up. It Eleven two. depends on who's playing, you know. Match the four. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was quick Three games to low. Eleven five. Eleven three. So two. Well done to Alex. Yeah, two to the well done, ladies. Congratulations, Alex. That concludes today's quarterfinals. I'm going to have a quick chat with Alex. You got your breath back? Yeah, it looks like it. Right, Alex, welcome home. Thank you. <laughs> Good to have her back. You're looking fit, strong, motivated. You've been overseas now for uh, quite a few years playing the tour. How are you finding things? You've got up to 30 in the world. Uh, what's your goals, aspirations? Where do you want to go with that? Um, yeah, I'm based in Ireland at the moment. i um, kind of been on and off there for the last three years. Um, yeah, it's been a good move. I think um, yeah, kind of just being based on that side of the world. I've just got a new team with me now over there. Um, and Paul still helps me here and abroad. So I've got a, I've got a, lo a lot of support um, but it has taken a little bit of time to actually gather that support. So it was tough for a few years, um, but I'm starting to enjoy it again now. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to what's to come. You look like you're enjoying it. Um, a lot of your games since I last saw you play, well, I've, I've watched you online a couple of times, but um, everything about you just looks better. Your movement patterns, your technique, uh, your ball striking, um, your athleticism. You know, I'm looking at your muscle structure and things like that. So uh, you're happy with all that? Yeah, it's been going well. Um, I've had a good um, off season. I had a good uh, 10 weeks or so that I was training at a good training block. Um, kind of just getting in a, like a little bit of input from different coaches. Um, I'm just trying to like work on different things. I'm not going to say what I've been working on, but. Um <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> no. um, yeah, but it's been good. I've been really enjoying it. Your opponent, uh, Tegan, is a young lady that's uh, very determined. And one of her aspirations, um, as soon as she finished the study, is to go play on the tour like you were doing. Um, you obviously started and then a little bit blind and you're like listening to you now, you've learned and found your way. What advice would you give her starting out um, if you could have done it over again? Is there something that you would change or start differently that you could offer advice to her on, on the world tour? Um, I know it's quite daunting to obviously move overseas and maybe go on your own, but um, just to kind of take that initial leap, go to as many different places as possible. Um, try and absorb as much information as possible. Maybe you won't absorb all of it, um, but just kind of take like bits and pieces from different coaches. Um, just kind of throw yourself in the deep end a little bit. Um, it's tough. It's tough on the tour. It's definitely not like an easy life. Um, but yeah, if you're determined and you're hungry, like you'll make it. So good luck to her. Well, I hope you're listening, Tegan. That's great advice. One last thing. Um, you've won before in the national events. Um, what is the... Growth Point SA National Tournament represents in Alex's life? Um, well, it clearly represents a lot because I came back for it. So, um, yeah, it's massive. It's a massive thing to be the national champion. Um, 
it's, it's a great honor, obviously. Um, it's a great honor to represent your country, um, and that's ideally where you want to go after winning the Nationals um, or potentially winning it. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a massive milestone in any um, squash player's life in South Africa, I think. Well, it's wonderful having you back. It's an absolute joy to watch you play, and I look forward to your progress in the semifinals. Alex Fuller, everybody. It's the last men's quarterfinal of the Growth Point SA Nationals. First on court is a young gentleman from KZN. He's the KZN number one. He started playing squash at about the age of 10 years old. And he's coached by Dave De Beer. He loves the challenge of squash. Obviously being from Durban, no surprise, he enjoys surfing and golf. And his favorite movie is The Castle, my surname, can't go wrong. He enjoys lamb chops. In fact, all food. His name is Matthew Boot. His opponent went to her school, Framesbury. He uh, is the SACD number one. He is the country, country's number one. He is the reigning South African Growth Point National Men's Champion. He uh, enjoys fishing, hunting, and golf. Steak and avo. His name is Divald van Nikak. And your referee for this match is no one <laughs> yet. No, it's Alex. Mr. Alex Hewitson. Once again, a big thank you to everybody involved. Squash SA and uh, Di and her team from Accelerate putting this whole thing on. Once again, to City of Cape Town, the VNA Waterfront, Growth Point, all our subsidiary sponsors from Eurolux and uh, Carolyn's Flowers, Graham's Beck, Bayer's Kluif. KFC and Starbucks, BLK Clothing and Bears Furniture, Innovation and the Seller Club, VNA. We thank you all very much. Once again, tomorrow morning, we start at 11.40 a.m. We will start with the 5 to 8 playoffs and then progress to the men's and ladies semifinals from approximately 2.30 in the afternoon.
2022 Growth Point SA National PSA Tournament men's quarterfinal match between Diovel Fonico to serve, Matthew Boots to receive, best of five games, level. Uh, now we have come to the last match of the day with uh, the men's fourth quarter quarterfinal between Matt Boot from KZN and Gerard van Eekak from Port Elizabeth now playing for South African Country Districts. I'm joined again by Celeste Tucker in the commentary box for this final match. I think we could have quite a humdinger here because Matt, Matt can get around the court and keep, keep the ball going. Um, Gerard's playing very good squash at the moment, isn't he? Celeste. Excellent, yeah. He he too also came down for a good many hours to to prepare. Um, this court isn't easy, and now uh, him and his sister, one or two others, were here for a good many hours, getting used to the court, doing some drills, and really making sure that they understand how the court works. So one love. Open really must have been fifty shots. <laughs> Funny this with the men, hey? I mean, the men are so much more physical and capable um, to love even the juniors we had a couple of rallies there that we counted with 47 shots was one of them and this was between two under 15 boys and it was incredible that's a nice um, concept that we've, we've that's what we say put together with uh, the regional regional finals and then the winners coming out to the quarterfinals behind this court because it expands the the entry of, of the nationals because having it in one place not too many Three people love. can travel to one centre so just to have the eight the top eight in the quarters and semis and finals it's, it's created a, a lot more interest in, in the, to the national tournament. Yeah, definitely increasing the numbers because, you know, <laughs> economically at this time, it's, it's very expensive to travel anywhere. And, you know, we wouldn't get half the players playing in the tournament if you, say, had it at one venue in Joburg or Cape Town because um, it's just too expensive at the moment, you know. The Kalula gone and, and Mango gone, you know, the, the flats are, are just crazy at the moment and you know it, it, if you're one of those players who loves the game but one no you're not going to win the tournament what are the chances of you traveling to Cape That's Town it. when it's going to cost you 10 grand yes. for a weekend you know exactly. there's a wonderful little drop shot uh, touch shot that Matt played there strike to boot 2-3 Quite unusual to see Matt at a tournament because he doesn't play too many tournaments. You know, he's a very hard worker and super fit. And out four two. But you don't see him travelling around the country to play in, in the PSA tournaments. He plays in the odd one. Dear Vault is it's a high intensity, the, the, the pace is hard, it's fast, and you have to go like that with him for the whole match, otherwise, he'll take it. Now he, he's exceptionally strong, and he's, he's got incredible stamina, and he can go for ages. Just ground match into a position where he's Five, two. Standing. Now, he's one of those players that just waits until he's 100% sure that he can play a winner. And he just grinds away and makes you move and move and move. And when he feels that you, you're you really out of position, he'll go for it. He won't take, he doesn't take unnecessary out. risks. It's really similar to his, his Six sister. Six two. Yeah. Because that's how their, da their dad used to play, Anton. Yeah. Growing up in Port Elizabeth. Yeah. Straight down the line, down the wall game is sort of the game that we were all talking Seven about. 7-2. Yeah. And you can see the Avalt also has a very high um, degree of accuracy. 
<coughs> but he just, he just looks like he's got so much time. Yeah. He's, he's exceptionally quick. And it was quite something last year for him and his sister to both win. For the family. Yeah, yeah it was no. both, It was both of his first wins. Absolutely. It reminded me of the Martins. You know, Rodney, Martin, and Michelle and Brett. Michelle and Brett. Um, if it wasn't Brett winning and Martin, uh, uh, Rodney. Rodney coming second, then it was the other way Eight around, or, or first and third, you yeah. know. And then Michelle w winning the women's, an incredible family, squash family that was. I think sometimes the it's the and family rivalry, you know. Mm. Um, your brother plays, you start playing, you want to get better than him, and you just keep going, and you get roped up in that whole com competition yeah. between family members. I mean, he, he, he just up. so relaxed and, and, and puts nine the sort three. Of away seemingly away so easily, you know. So it's such a Down. simple drop shot. 10-3, game ball. So effective. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing fancy about Deer Gold. 11-3, good, game to solid, Panika. basic Panika squash. beats one game slow. Oh, quick first game, 11-3 to Deer Gold. And we'll be back soon. Level. Well, we're back for game number two in this, the last quarterfinals of the men's both point nationals. Uh, so Devil was saying he, he really wants to turn pro and, and play on the PSA. Yeah. See how well he can do over well there. Enough. Look, I think he's got, he's got a good chance of doing quite well. Because he's, he's, he's got, he's certainly got a good repertoire of, of shots, and uh, and he's got patience, you know, and he's strong as a fit, fit youngster. Um, Straight to boots, too low. Yeah, he's you know, and he moves so well, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't overdo things. And, and he, there's no nervous energy with, with him. Oh, and he's, he's really developed into a very professional player, you know, he takes his nutrition seriously, 
he takes, um, you know, avoiding alcohol and that sort of thing, which a lot of youngsters don't do. Yeah. They seem to think it's okay. But if you want to be a professional, I mean, I remember Craig von der Buck, he was religious with what he ate and drank and while he was on the world circuit. And I mean, he managed to get up to 20, yeah. 23 or, or so. And that's what you have to do. It, it's very much, um, you know, as, as much as you're training, resting is, is as important. And, and these are all things you've got to know as a professional. Yeah. Are you resting enough? Are you going out at night and, and um, drawing till two in the morning? <laughs> Yeah, but it's really nice All to have this facility of live streaming to show the, the, the squash playing population of South Africa, or oh, worldwide actually, um, on the Squash Squash SA Facebook page. It's really, it's, it's really done nicely and I was watching a bit earlier on before we came on air. Handouts, and it really one four. It's fantastic on the, especially if you put it on a laptop really comes out nicely. Yeah, no, I mean, when they were at um, World Masters recently, I literally watched every South African, every match. And I, I you know, you, with Chrome, you can cast it onto your TV, and it's really wonderful. Um, it, particularly and if you're not five able one. to be there or, or go, and you really just want to know how the South Africans are doing. It was fantastic. I really, really think it's a vital part of the tournament is to have live streaming because I know Six, a lot one. of people that would like Left. to have come down couldn't come down and because of costs and actually watch here. But, you know, you, you, live streaming's great. You can have a quick log on in, even in the office and right. catch up. So that's, that's been a really nice way. It's been patient. It's been Maybe just relaxed a little bit. Just when I say that, then he makes a mistake. And out. 2 6. Commentator's curse. Oh. So I think that boast is a, a good example of just how quick the vault is. Yeah. I think that one would have gotten away from most players, but he is super quick. And if you watch the two of them, Matt is definitely doing most of the work right. when it comes to movement. And um, Gerwalt is just sitting around that tee and waiting for his opportunity. That's and tight. there it is. Three, one six. Thing on this court. If you hit the ball tight, it's actually... Nice. No, it's, it's like the, the ball has suctions. It sticks to that wall. Please don't wipe the hands. Has the wall. Thank it's you. really, really hot compared to the other courts. to Fanikok, 4-6, right side. Matt hitting a loose shot there, right into the middle of the court, and uh, as you said, Dervos is camping on the tee, and it just great to the straight for It was interesting to, to see some of the spectators here this morning. There were quite a lot of the sevens rugby players here. So the French ladies team was here. Oh, the okay. Fijians were here. The men's we played in the Commonwealth Games final. They were upstairs. All coming to watch the squash and they yeah. seem to enjoy it. Extremely busy weekend in Cape Town. I know there's also a, a big um, concert on tribute to Queen this weekend. Okay. So um, you know, Freddie Mercury, a lot of people's hot favourite in life, and I'm sure lots of people have come here specifically for that as well. 
So if you can get all three in, that's yeah. a fabulous weekend. <laughs> Six. Please don't wipe your hands on the glass. Thank you. No, yeah, and he didn't move from his drop because he don't just wipe your hands on knew the glass, Matt was going to counter drop. Five, six. Not allowed to. Five, six. Exceptionally quick. I mean, one wonders just exactly what you have to do. Oh, a good drop shot. There, into the neck is, is I think, Ten the best out. way to get Seven, five. <laughs> to win a point. <laughs> to to win a point. <laughs> yeah. yeah be very accurate. Oh, unfortunate there. A little bit loose. Very clever. Nice and out six, the seven. Court. Not going for the killer, just to softly across the court. You'll often see when when um, Diervolt is in front, he will. He'll immediately play the ball to the back to give his opponent off the tee and to give himself a little bit of time. Yes, that's six, seven. Right side. A little bit scrappy in the middle of the court there. Mm. And those shots that come straight at your body, sometimes you just can't get them, can't get to do too much with them. Nice tough one. And so he just gives himself time to get back to the team. Yeah, Matt having to pull out all the stops, but he's doing it. Yep. Making a contest of this game for sure. And, uh, Nine six. Really, really great drop there. Living in the games at one end of the day. Carries on like this. You know, the thing is, we're all human, and when someone goes a few points ahead of you, you know, the natural instinct is to get a bit nervous. Mm. And if you do let that creep into your gra game, you can actually. Yes, let's. 9 6. You can actually yeah. make unforced errors, you exactly. know, because yeah. you. The man goes a little bit walkabout. No left. Hand out seven nine. Again, they're super tight. Yeah. But I think in that instance right. you've got seven, to get the have to go to the, the right. Of the Seven, dart, nine. Even if it is tight, because mm. these guys are so good at getting that ball no, off the, the, the wall. Yeah. No, it's just a Eight, nine. Nothing shot into the tin. Really scoring how quickly things can turn around. Just with the 
couple of mistakes, and a couple of good shots, and then all of a sudden you've won three or four points in a row. In contrast to the old school one. You could sit on the same score for half an hour. Yeah, and and guys like Deerbolt had a huge advantage with the old schooling because they could run for three or four hours <laughs> at the same pace. And out, 10-8, game ball. Unfortunately, that is an opportunity to level the scores at one each. Let's see if you can do it. getting him into a bit of trouble there. It's not quite as accurate and it's a little bit too high. Let's look to this. Titus, watch this. And I guess at this time, time of the game they're just both trying not to make mistakes. Yeah. That's a good shot. Oh, that's really good tight drive, but and these guys are just so quick that, like we said, it's, it's very difficult to play oh, with them. Yeah. Okay. Please don't wipe your hands One on the glass. Back. Nine, ten, game ball. Straight to boots, eleven, nine. One game ball. Well, that's if you don't have it onto the front wall first, it pops out like that with the side wall. It's really difficult. You know, these guys move so well. Welcome back One game all. We've to so. come to the third game. Game leveled up at one each. Net boot serving. Oh, that last game got a little bit scrappy towards the end there. But that often happens. Let's see what the coaches have said to Down, one love. Error. Do you vote? 
Now dear has got to keep his cool calm collected way on court. He's back to what he knows best. has really stepped up his game. <coughs> oh, another error. Yeah, I know. Know. when somebody Two keeps picking up what mm. you think are your winners and they keep picking it up, it gets frustrating and then you start going for the winners a little bit too soon. battling to finish the point off unlike the first game yeah yes and that's close to no let to love right side it's, it's interesting that there, there are no left handers this tournament in the quarterfinals there are no left handers yeah One, two. Some heavy breathing going on there. Okay. Well, they've been playing for nearly 25 minutes, so. And they've had some long runs. Yeah. And it looks a lot easier on TV. Yes, let's. You know, One, two. Than it does when you're actually on the court doing the running around yourself. Yeah, I know. Especially when you watch um, a lot of the big international tournaments, it looks like those guys are just on a stroll around the court, you know, it takes away from the actual speed of the game. Down. To all. Left. Titan, it's a bit of a stretch there for Matt to try that drop shot at that other left position is possibly not the correct choice. Down. Yeah, oh, and the, you know, this is what we often see with Devalt. He's going to just keep going at his pace and keep Three, going two. and keep going. And, you know, it's a wearing down process. And then so many matches I've watched with him and his opponent you know, it just gets tired and starts making those unforced errors. Matt really trying to dominate that tee there and cut the ball off as much as he can. Three will burst there. Four, two, yep. left. So close to the neck that it's really, really a big stretch to pick it up. Down. And forced to enter there. Head out. Three, four. <coughs> Score still very close. Yeah. 
Yeah, we all love those, don't we? Going for that, Nick. Yep. Hand out. Head five head three. In the back in the court there. The mm. Back ball boast. You don't see that often these days. No. Six three left. Looks like Matt's getting a little bit tired, yeah. Yeah, and this is Devolt's game, hey? Just keep going. And he doesn't like to wait for his opponent to have a rest. He's very much a you know quick server. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Six three. Yeah, he's taking his time to wipe his face. What you can do with that uh, little box for the towels in front. Although that started in COVID, it's actually a jolly good idea yeah. because you don't have to wait till the end of the game. And, you know, on a day like today where it is pretty warm outside, it can get really hot in that box. Yeah. The old school players with a bit, a bit of experience will really use that to their advantage. Though. Take the time to go walk to the front of the court, wipe their hands on the towel face. So you can actually a lot of gamesmanship involved. If, if you do, if you want to. Oh no, I mean it's it's across all sports, individual sports, you know, like the tennis. I mean Rafa takes the whole time he has to serve yeah. to go through his little routine of nose, forehead. <laughs> adjustment, you know, mm. the whole thing. <laughs> There's a really fa famous uh, squash player, Derek Green, back in the 70s, and he was playing for South Africa, and he used to have peppermints in the hanky in his pocket. He used to pull his hanky out and peppermints all over the court. And then you have to pick all the peppermints up. <laughs> so that's a seven that's three right. Wasting time. They certainly wouldn't allow that. No, not at the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eight three. Fatigue creeping in, I think. Mm. A couple of unforced errors there. See how quickly the robots take serves. Very little. Yeah. Time. Yeah, good tight. Yeah, and Devil knows right. his biggest advantage is he can he can carry on at the pace he started with. I think he goes beyond and over the limits when it comes to his training. I don't think too many people do as Ten much three. training as he does. Game He's gotten so strong. Yeah. Eleven three. Game to Fanico. Yeah. So Matt's Matt's means definitely games looking one. a bit yeah. weary now.
Kirk leads two games to one. Level. Well, we're back to game number four. Games are 2 1 to Devil for Kirk in the last of the quarterfinals for today. Zivot uh, just one love. Met Brute down there in that last game and been making quite a few errors towards the end. Let's see what he can do this game. Yeah, he's definitely putting Matt in the Two back love. behind him. Three love. Yeah, and he sometimes looks like he's up the pace, but he hasn't. He's just kept playing at the same pace. It's just that when Four love. his opposition is fresh in the beginning, then they can manage that pace. But he just keeps going at the same pace. That's definitely moving much slower. Five love. Hands on the hip. One is an indication that you look tired. <laughs> Absolutely Down. brilliant lob there. Six low. Which was quick to six love. And this could be the last game of this match. Seven low. Seven low. Yeah, yeah. If someone asked me, I would say he's definitely worn Matt down. <laughs> That's what That's for sure. Well, we're in for some interesting squash tomorrow. I think there's some really good matches lined up. And out. One Absolutely, seven. and uh, very, very good <laughs> matchups in the semis. We kid on the block, but just in the middle is probably a good one by the looks of the And Christo and... Ron Willoughby will also be quite an entertaining match. Yeah. And, and the ladies are some really good ones. Gerald is at his strongest because incredible stamina to just keep going. But if you just see how quickly he moves back to the tee yeah. from the back of the court. So he's already on the tee. Yeah. Two steps and he's back on the tee. Read that one well. And out. Who's there from Devolt for this game? The big difference here is that Devolt's standing on the tee when Matt's hitting the, the shot. Whereas oh. the other way around, Matt's still running back. And out. 10 2. Devolt's hitting the shot. Match ball. So he's already a meter off the pace. Mm. Which makes a big difference. Yeah, and now in the game, he was almost Most a meter behind the two game. Games the one. So that brings us to the end. 11, 11, 11, and we 11, will be back tomorrow at 20 to 12 for the semi-finals and some playoffs. Right, thank you. I'll stand up a closer. Right, welcome back in Cape Town. Defending Growth Point National Champion. Happy with your quarterfinal? Yeah, I'm happy. Uh, it's actually my first time ever playing Matt Brute. Um, obviously, I've seen him play in, at Jarvis and stuff like that, but I've never played against him. Um, so, yeah, obviously a different player, different type of game. So I had to adjust um, in the third, but yeah, I'm happy. He's better than he looks. Yeah, a lot better than he looks. 
I say that with respect, Matt. Yeah, Matt is like he's very fast and he moves well, reads the game nicely. So you have to change it up a bit if it's going to be one pace. He's going to hurt you. Your uh, last year's ranking was 125 in the world, and uh, are you still got aspirations to go overseas and go and play? Last time I had that conversation with you about six months ago. No, longer now. Eight months ago. Um, where where is Devil's head sitting at the moment with regards to his squash future? Well, my plans this year is actually a lot better than last year's. Um, this year I've been actually talking to some people overseas, uh, just trying to get the best place to go, to play, to coach, um, just to get the right people around me, because if I go and I don't have the right people around me, it's going to be a disaster. Um, but yeah, I've got a people that I'm talking to, so I'm just going to take it from there. And uh, after this tournament, after the Nationals, how many more uh, PSA events have you got till the end of the year? Uh, I think we have three that we know of. Um, we got the $5,000 PSA at Randburg, and then we got two close satellites at uh, Parkview. And then after that, I'm not sure if they're going to host anymore. Obviously, I'm assuming that it's your goal to uh, become a national champion for a second time in a row. How much preparation have you done coming into this and, and work? Uh, actually, prepared a little bit earlier this year. Um, obviously, last year I didn't um, prepare enough, but eventually, in the end, I made it through, especially with the type of court. Um, but to be a day earlier, even one day earlier, makes a big difference playing on this court. So, yeah, just mental preparation is most important now. I have one last question. It's got to do with uh, SACD. The ladies here have got the SACD number one, number two, number three, and the men, we've got the SACD number one, number two, and number three. And for people that don't know, that stands for South African Country Districts, and they are their reigning uh, interprovincial champions. W how has that transpired that uh, a, a province that is made up of small areas around the country have become so strong? Uh, it's all thanks to JP. Um, he's been getting the people there, he's looking after the people, he's helping. Um, there's, if there's a problem, he sorts it out quickly. So it's all thanks to JP and his dad. Well, that's fantastic to hear. Well, JP, well done. Continue the good work. Devolt, great to see you play again. Good luck for your semi-final. And uh, we'll see you about uh, 2.30, 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, I hope. Devolt, funny cake, everybody. Well played, national champion.